Hi, welcome to Family Sense. Family Sense is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage, especially in these toughest times. This is a production of No Regrets Communication, a division of Hope Education Network. Should you have any questions or need any information, please feel free to contact us on 0772-518-554. You can also contact us on 754 734 Seven three eight. You can also email us on no regrets at counselor.com. Right now, join in for insights from today's session. God bless you. Training my sorrows, I'm training my sorrows, I'm training my shame. joy of the Lord. I'm training my sickness. I'm training my sickness. My pain. I'm training my pain. Laying them down. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Oh yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, 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 to your joy. Yes, Lord, I am grateful, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I find that I yes, to Chanio, I find that I yes, to Simula Banga. No yes, I no yes, I see na musula. I find that I yes, I tell you. Help me sing. I find that I yes, I tell you. I find that I yes, I see mula vanga. No yes, I no yes, I see na musula. I find that I yes, I tell you, tell you, oh tell you. I find that. Father, we bless your name for who you are. Lord, we worship you because you are faithful. We are grateful, Father. We are thankful for who you are.
I'm happy to see you once again. Thank you for coming at this moment. I would like to let me welcome Mr. Wesigwa. This is my boyfriend, my best boyfriend for, for 20 years. 20 years, we are still counting. I'm not regretting. Glory be to the name of the Lord Jesus. Good after 10 a.m. Yeah, the reason we greet by the hour, it's because time is life. It has never been money. Time is what? Life. How you use your time reflects exactly what is valuable in your life and what is not valuable. Yeah, so time is what? Life. Um, Kenneth Mwesugwa is my name, once again, and I'm not ashamed of it. And I have one wife. I stand here to say I have been faithful to her all through so far by the grace of God. And she actually happens to be a woman, not a man. You know, somehow people have wives who are what? Men. And then women have husbands who are actually ladies. So those things there which are distorting the world must not actually be. So we must be very clear on what we are up to. System of work. Why system of work? It's very important for us to know. So as we set into this, Lord, I'm very grateful that you've brought us together this morning. I believe you've caused us to come together because there is a particular theme, a particular message you want us to learn each one of us as individuals. I give thanks and praise because you've heard our prayer. And I believe without any doubt that surely you've answered it by the faith we have 
in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So system of work comes along and yet we are talking about family sense. How is work related to family? And the journey we are moving today is accountability to function what? Better. So that system of work fits into the whole picture of what we are dealing with. The whole picture of what we are dealing with is equipping a generation with gracious wisdom on all matters of marriage and family. And we know no generation moves alone. One generation is connected to the prior generation and it's even connected to the next generation. So every generation has a role to do what? To play. Just as it is written for us in Acts chapter 13, uh, verse 36. For me, I'm reading it for myself. For when Mwesigwa finishes serving God's purpose in his own generation, he will die and he will be buried in a grave and his body will decay whether you want it or you don't want it. Does that make sense? Yes, <laughs> That's the point. So whether you want it or not, period. So what is the job I have to do? In my own generation, I have to finish God's purpose, period. So I must ask myself, what is God's purpose for me? And I want to encourage every one person here. What is God's purpose for my life? A very critical thing to ask. And it's the very reason why we are not here accidentally. We are here on purpose. And that purpose is what makes us visualize what we are seeing ahead of ourselves. When everybody is crying, the family is broken. Our values are broken. Our nation has gone to the dogs. I can't afford to speak like that. Why? I'm not unaware of God's purpose for why I live. So I choose to do my role. And I believe God being the faithful God, he will fulfill his desire. And I think that's very important for any one of us living on earth to ever live that way. Because none of us has ever brought himself in this earth by himself. In fact, I can continue opening in Act 17. And what does it say? Act 17. Just to get a firmer background here. Act 17, verse 24 to verse 28 says something. And what does it say? The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by hands. He does not live in buildings, yet he is actually the one who made all the world, the heavens, and everything in it, and the earth. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. Listen. From one man, Adam, he made every nation of men. That includes Uganda. He made every nation of men. I don't even attribute the creation of Uganda to the British. They were just being humans used by God. They might have done it not as well as well, but God ordained it. 
When God doesn't ordain a nation to exist, he can even break it like he broke Russia many years ago. The map I used to read as I was as a growing person had USSR, which is no longer an existing country. I hope you know that very well. The map I grew up reading had Yugoslavia somewhere in the center of Europe. And that country just broke into pieces with all the modernity that is in Europe. You can't believe. He can't even break a nation like Uganda, like US, USA, if he wishes to. Out together. So even Uganda is not an accident. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. You can't believe, he can't even break a nation like Uganda, like US, USA, if he wishes to. Out together. So even Uganda is not an accident. It's not a what? An accident. Why? The text is sound and clear for me. It says, from one man, Adam, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. Now that tells me that first, I am not born in Uganda by accident. Otherwise, I would have been born a Zimbabwean yeah. or even an American. Yeah. But I was born in this address called Uganda by ordination of God. And even the boundaries set are not even set by humans. How to get there? And even the time, I wasn't born in 1820 because God did not ordain me for that period. And I will, I will not be born in 2059. All together. I was born in the particular time I was born. I hope as I speak about myself, you are actually telling yourself as well. Not an accident, but a purpose. And listen, he even determines the exact places where you and I should live. It's the very reason why I never die to try to get a visa to America. I only, when I need one, I get one on purpose. And I go there not because I'm dying to try to be in America or to try to become one. But because I'm going there on what? On purpose. If I want a visa to Kenya, I will get it. If I want whichever visa I want, if I need it, and what, why am I even getting that visa? So purposeful people, God desires. And what does he say next? God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him. And find him, though he's not far from each one of us. God is not so far from each one of us. We probably need to be attentive. And that is very, very important for us. So when we look at that, it means that, yes, God has a purpose for everything that happens. And we are here in family science for a purpose. And the purpose is to equip a what? A generation with gracious what? Wisdom on all matters of marriage and family. Not some matters, but everything concerning marriage and family. So when we give and we get together here, we are getting together with what purpose. And what are some of those matters? God is not a speaker in mysteries. He is very sound and very clear in everything that he does. Our inattention is what makes him appear to be very difficult and never talking. Inattention is what probably we need to work upon sometimes. 
Because God is always speaking loud and clear to they who choose to pursue his path. What does he say in uh, Job 33? Just to double check. Job 33 verse 13 and 14 says, Why do you complain to him that he answers none of man's words? For God does speak. Now in one way. Now in another. Unfortunately, men may not perceive it even when he speaks. It's a big danger. Not perceiving when God speaks. But he speaks in many different ways. So when we get together, all matters of marriage and family are clearly addressed. And God desires to speak soundly. Soundly. But sometimes we actually don't perceive it when he speaks. And all the matters he puts across to us is what we put together in what we call the family wheel. All matters concerning the family are actually summarized, put in that graphic which is before us. And if we are very sensitive to it, he gave this to us, not me, Mwesigwa, but to every single individual, he gave that as the standard principles by which all families, all marriages should operate by. So principles are standard and they are unchangeable. And he has repeated himself over all through that, all through the generations. Why he said this for us as a mold, as a template for us to apply. The situation, we might apply the principles in unique ways in our unique situations but they remain unchangeable principles when you see that and go back down and be very emphatic in Genesis chapter 2 you see what he read and we can reread the text together or I can lead along and we begin with verse 4 says, This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on earth, and there was no man to work the ground. Verse 6 in chapter 2 Genesis, But the streams came up, and the from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted the garden in east, in, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A, a river watering the ground flowed from Eden, and from there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first headwater is the Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic raisin and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Ashur. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. What we are seeing in all these texts is a basic principle called resources. God gave man what? Resources. He placed resources in all the earth. Everywhere. There is no country that doesn't have resources. There is no place in this world where there are no resources and enough for people 
enough everywhere. And listen to what he puts. When he gives the resources to this man, and he puts, okay, he puts these resources here on earth. What does he do in verse 15? The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to work it and take care of it. What are we seeing here? He doesn't just give resources for nothing. He gives resources and accompanies those resources with what we call responsibility. Now the battle is many times not being sensitive to my responsibility. Not being sensitive to your responsibility. That is where the real battle is. Sometimes we have resources and we are so irresponsible that we don't realize we actually have the resources with us. Or sometimes we are blind to the resources we actually have. A big battle. And I think it is a very big battle for us in this country. We don't see what we have. And many times, the reason we don't see what we, don't ha we, have, what we have in abundance is something to do with responsibility. We don't want to carry on the responsibility associated to the resources. That's where the real battle is. And then we begin to accept the economic concepts which say third world. Although God made four worlds or five, five worlds. How many, how many worlds did God make? And how many of us believe actually we, li we live in the third world? That is a label created by whoever created it to make sure you remain enslaved. And somebody labels you third world. And when you look at yourself, you see that you're really actually a third world citizen. <laughs> and you are of very little value, actually. So then you begin even to despise yourself. Meanwhile, as he tells you that, he says, I want to come and invest in your poor country. <laughs> right? And all the economics we read <laughs> is rare. But the first thing he gave are what? resources. And there are enough resources in this world for every family and for every single individual. They are enough. But resources are not given for nothing. They are given with responsibility. If you access resources and you are irresponsible, you actually lose them. And then you cry and feel, why? I hope you saw that pattern. That he gives the resources. After that, he put the man in the Garden of Eden to do what? To sleep and do nothing. Just get resources as he desires. The access key to those resources is responsibility. So, when I look at that wheel, you are seeing the blue circle there. It is talking about every single principle which is written in Genesis chapter 2. Is actually, when you see that text, that is what is expressed. The first thing he gives are what? Resources. The second thing he gives are what we choose to call enterprise. Because it, enterprise is built on what? Responsibility. Just as if you use resources very well, they become what? Assets. If you use them very well, they become what? Assets. If you don't use them very well, you end up with what? Liabilities. 
You end up in date after date after date, and actually they become very destructive things if you don't use resources very well. They destroy your life. I have been around long enough to see how people mishandle resources and how they destroy themselves by mishandling resources. So when we talk of resources, you can either convert them into what? Assets, or you can convert them into liabilities. That's the way. And what helps you to do so is what we are calling enterprise. And if you do something, enterprise is what we think as work and then what? Take care. That's what enterprise is all about. It's one thing to work. It's another to care for what you have done. If you don't care for what you have done, you actually lose it, even when you work so hard. And sometimes uh, people don't work, and then they lose the assets. They keep complaining about the others. They have taken away our things. They've sold everything. Government is so terrible. Maybe sometimes they need to sell it so that we raise up to responsibility and do something. Are you seeing? Isn't God so gracious? He did. He gives the resources so that we may convert them into assets, so that we may fulfill our responsibilities by being enterprising. And it doesn't just do that. If you look at verse 16 and 17, you see something and the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now that is a set of rules. And one side of the rule is saying, feel free to do this. But the other side of the rule is saying, please don't exceed these boundaries. And that's how rules are set all over the world. Every rule set, it has things it allows you to do. And it has things it tells you, don't exceed the boundaries. I am allowed to buy a car and drive it on the roads, but within rules. If I don't follow the rules, what's going to happen of driving a car? What's going to happen to me? I'm either going to cause accidents or I'm actually going to face accidents. All together. That's the way it is. Even when it comes to enterprise or to work, there are rules of how work should be done. If you do it rightly and properly, within the boundaries of things, you flourish. You generate even more assets to do more work, to do more assets, to do more work. To be, It is a responsibility. So you see, we can go piece by piece and see. And besides the rules, what does he say? What, what do you see in verse 18? And the Lord God said, it is not good for Michael Kisa to be alone. I will make Lucy a helper, a suitable word, helper for him. Do you see how it does? Now we are really seeing that this man being given a responsibility, there is no man in this world who can fulfill anything by themselves. I can even say there is no woman who can fulfill anything by themselves. We are always dealing with what? One another. One another. And you realize that's where now family is being brought into the picture. And the word is sweet of what? Helper. Helping in what? Helping in the other responsibility. Using the resources God grants. Are you seeing now how everything works out and connects up together? 
So, without necessarily emphasizing every bit of what is in that scripture, I want to encourage each one of us, go and do what? Study the entire chapter by yourself. It is a responsibility upon you. It actually does you good when you study with your heart and listen to it and prove if that will is real or unreal. All together. So that you don't wait for probably be me to try to explain it to you. Why? If you wait for me to explain it to you, what is going to happen, I'm going to turn you into my slave. And that's not my intention. And that's not the intention of any one member of the family team, family sense team. It is each one of us to be able to grab and be able to grasp and run with these things and actually prepare the next word, generation. You have children in your house, or at least you are a child in your house, in the house of your father, of your mother. We turn ourselves into a team. Are you seeing the team? So it's your responsibility to do study and help yourself to understand this thing even further. The wheel is an aid to help us understand the text which appears to be too much and too heavy for many people. It doesn't replace the text. It only aids in understanding the text which is written before you. And my prayer is don't just look at that wheel. Look at it and see. If you use the principle very well, the principle is what you are seeing in the blue in the interior aspect there. How to get that? If you use it very well, you will receive the green aspect of a particular principle. If you use, if you don't use that principle very well, you end up with the red aspect of that principle. I will give you an example. If you, for instance, apply the principle of rules very well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You are going to bring order. Order, first of all, in your personal life. And then order in your family. How together. If you don't handle the principle of rules very well, learning, finding how rules function, how together, you are going to end up with what? Chaos. You see that? So that is the difference. And you realize that these rules work together. And they are deliberately expressed that way, that you cannot exclude even a single rule in that will. And you remain with your family, with your marriage, with your individual life in shape. You don't use some and exclude the other. And you think things will still remain holding together. No. That is the basic truth. And they link into each other. They leak into each other. And whoever is gifted in art is the one who helped us to put that together. How together? To show exactly how these things work. And they are real. And it, when we come here, we are not coming here for academics. We are coming here for real life and how it actually works and how we should function and how God set things from the very beginning. If you see like resources point towards what? Enterprise. Enterprise points towards what? Rules. Rule move cause us to become what? A team. Team leads us to naming and then maintenance and repair. Then union and unity is built up. Then communication. Then again back to rules. So it keeps running together. And those, that is how a family is held together. 
And the template is given to us in Genesis chapter 2. Before any mess came into this world. Before the man even did what? Sinned. So, we are really getting back to what we call the original. Original setup. Before things got messed up. Because sometimes we want to build up, build up things on a messed kind of uh, perspective of things. But this is what we're dealing with. So it is this wheel which we run through season by what? Season. And in this year, we have been emphasizing certain aspects of resources and what? Enterprise. You know we can't say everything at one go. It is impossible. All together. So we pick on a particular part and deal with that as well as we can and as either lightly or deeply as we need to at a particular time. And when that is done, next, we go to the next phase. All together. So with that kind of setup, you use a principle very well, you look at the green line. That will be the result. You use the, you use the principle poorly or you don't use it, you end up in the red line. So if you don't play into a team, you become a what? A burden. And none of us wants to be a burden. So we begin to really say, how do I participate in a team? All together. So those are the things we have to look at. And when we really use the principles very well, we end up being what? Joyful in our lives. Joyful in our families. Life becomes so enjoyable. And in fact, family becomes such a beautiful thing. You have all the reason to say, next year I have to recommit my covenant to my wife. I have to go back and be, a hey, put in quotes, added together to my wife. Next year, serious. I do that every seven years. I go back and say, yes, you Christian, I, you are my wife again. And I commit to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. Yes. And next year I'm going to do that. It's the next seven. I count seven years and I do that. He is serious. And even if you try to make me unmarried today and you ask me who to marry, I will go back to Mrs. Mwesiko. <laughs> serious. Nobody can replace her. So this will, I thought it is very important for us to re-emphasize and remind ourselves about this. And I pray we actually raise our children to help us understand, I mean to help them understand even how this actually works in a practical sense, in an everyday sense, not only Sunday from 10 to no, no. You understand? <laughs> you know, sometimes we do that. We do it Sunday uh, from 10 to what? To noon. Right? Yet they live outside of Sunday 10 to noon, all the other part of their lives. It should be an everyday, ongoing thing, okay? Yeah, so on those two um, principles we have been emphasizing, it's actually those two principles is the beginning of economy. And that's why this year we've dealt with what? Economy. We must build a sense of economy, not from a class of economics in the university or in S5 or S6. Where should the class of economics begin from? Home. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Where should the class of economics begin from? Home.
Teaching and equipping our children with a sense of what economy is part of a family responsibility. It's not a lecturer to do what? To talk about. It's not the governor of the Bank of Uganda to begin trying to talk about these matters of economy. It's not about a politician trying to lecture this, the economy is bad. Everybody is saying all those things. What are you saying at your family level? And what is even economy all about? And because they are very important, because they are very crucial, in fact, sometimes when we talk about the other aspects of of family, uh, people are not as excited as when we get to issues of money and resources and survival. That's when people's antennas become so what? So active and so alive. So we must address these things to the core. How does economy get to handle and be dealt with? And please don't think it will be solved at university. Don't think it will be solved by professors. Don't think it will be solved by a politician. It is to be solved by you who is here. How together. It's the very reason why we deal with this. And really, it should be understood in its simplest form. There is nothing as powerful as simplicity. Simplicity is extremely important. Unfortunately, we don't like it. We have somehow been designed to try to prove that we are what? Complicated. I want to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Mm. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. What does it say? See, this alone I found, mm -hmm. that God made man upright. Mm -hmm. But they have sought out many schemes. They have sought out many what? Schemes. schemes. Every one of us was made what? Upright. Upright. But we have sought out many schemes. And those schemes make our lives appear to be so what? Complicated and unbearable. Some versions even make it different. See what I discovered? Mm -hmm. God made man simple. God made man what? Simple. Mm. But they get lost in their many thoughts. God made man what? Simple. But we get lost in many kinds of thoughts, theories. We lose ourselves in many of those things. Simplicity is extremely important. I'm trying to do a review, and the review tells me economy runs by work. It begins with work. That's what economy, that's where economy begins from. So please, work. And what was the initial instruction that God gave to man? What was it? Work and take care. And the truth is simplicity. Honesty is built on what? Simplicity. That's when you are able to see what is mostly not seen by people. And these things we share here, anybody can pick them, can learn them, can see their revelation, can see how they work, especially when we choose to be what? Simple. The moment you shift away from simplicity, what, what is going to happen? We are going into twisted mind. There is no other definition for it other than confused. <laughs> and that's why even things of this kind get confused and get lost in there. And we miss the real gist of the matter. So economy is simply what? Work to begin with. And what is the complication about work? Work is for big people. 
Isn't that what is being taught in school? Work is for what? Adults. And then you tell a child in the home, please take care of your plate. What's going to happen? I'm not a maid. And even we don't want our children to work in the house. Eh? That's not healthy. It is removing a sense of what? Responsibility from them. And I'm not meaning shout at them, but equip them the value of what? Work. I'm not saying break their backs. I'm only saying build them and never should work be looked at as a punishment. Work was never given to man as a punishment, but that is our biggest perception. Work has never been a punishment in God's perspective. It only becomes a punishment when we distort the order of God for work. That's where the real battle is. And please, every work has a reward to it. So please, work should be followed on with showing their rewards. What is the reward for work? Don't forget to see the rewards of what? Work. If you don't see the rewards of work, you will just see a punishment of working. Just punishment. How burdensome this is. How terrible it is. Why? Because we misconceive it many times. And please, after getting the rewards, what should we do? Manage the rewards, and I might put an extra word properly. If you fail to manage the rewards of work, what is going to happen? You're going to spoil them. You're going to waste yourself up. You're going to destroy your life. And that's where the real battle is. So, these are the three aspects upon which an economy operates. An economy doesn't begin from Bank of Uganda or from Parliament or from Finance, Minister of Finance. It begins in the family. And what happens, what we normally see as the general fuller picture is actually this family running its economy, the other family running its economy, the other family running its economy, and none of us can, pro no, no family can produce everything it needs by itself. No family can produce everything it needs by what? By itself. That's why now one family will go to another family which is producing something different. I need what you have. And say, oh yes, by the way, I also need what, I, what you have. Let us work together. You supply what I have, I, you, 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 I supply to you with what I have, you supply me what you have. And that's how you begin to have connection of what? Families together. That's the way it is. That's the order in which God created his world. That's the way it was created to be, not the way it is today. So, work, and then do what? Get reward. Sometimes we forget to look at the reward for the work we do. It's very important. In fact, it is very godly for you to check out what is my reward for work. Now when people look at reward, please, it's not just money. It's not just what? Money. But what does Proverbs 14.23 say? Hard work is worthwhile. Mm -hmm. But empty talk will make you poor. Hard work is what? Worthwhile. 
worthwhile but empty talk but will make you poor but empty talk will make you poor so please let us do what work but work properly and that can only working properly can only be taught in the family not nowhere else and what happens it tells us it leads us to reward the rewards must be managed very well simple if you lose anything else don't forget please forget about the oligopolies monopolies and the demand cover those things just leave the mind what confused go simple you will see the fullness of everything okay and so this is what we've been dealing with and please we can't handle everything at a go we can't handle everything in the hours that we have because whenever we come here practically we use to for us to receive uh, something and address particular things we use 6 hours so if you add 6 hours plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 those are how many 24 hours in a year we can't handle everything but again there is something that you can do this gives you a starter to dig further we haven't dealt with it, getting rewards or even managing what rewards it would be too much in one go okay and now on matters of work we began with something and that is the system of what? Work. And if, uh, you know, work can be very interesting. Work can even be talking. You see what I'm doing here? Man, you can get tired. Yes, you can get what? Tired. And you talk and you talk and it consumes energy. If you think it is not work, you come and stand here. <laughs> if you think it's not work, you come and stand here and you see. When you stand here, that's when you can even, sometimes we can even get intimidated by eyes. Eh? Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, as you keep doing the grace that multiplies and you don't get intimidated. Right? Yeah, but it's hard work. Then you speak. Standing is hard work. Is it worthwhile? If you are speaking worthwhile things. All together. Yeah. Sometimes uh, your work might be just talking. And don't just call it just, just, just talking. It's hard work. For even to stand and be able to, to speak anything sensible. Can you imagine how much work goes on behind there? Too much. Too much. So, economy, we told ourselves. Sense of economy runs around those three pillars. Work, get rewards, and then manage the Rewards of work. Just that. We focused on what? Work. And that work came with system of work. That has been the theme this year. And when we say system, we told ourselves simple steps that uh, Mrs. Kayondo is going to lead us into next. My name is Agnes Kayondo. Um, we have been looking at building a system of work. We are saying that a system, these are the simple steps following one after another, which a person does in order to fulfill a task. And that work are the actions done to satisfy needs of people. Work is about meeting a need. So the actions we do to satisfy a particular need whether it's to satisfy someone's hunger, whether it's to meet a health need, whether it's to, hit, uh, to, uh, to meet a need for managing something, it is the actions we do in order to satisfy someone's need. And so when we bring it together, the system of work are the simple steps one following one another that a person does to satisfy the needs of people. 
And over this year, we have been um, going over this. And we were, we were telling ourselves that why is a system of work important? And we are saying when we don't have a system of work, when you get up and rush into doing something, what you are doing will be disorganized. Things are done anyhow. They are done anytime. You know, there is no balance in it. Everything becomes expensive because there is no order to the work. Costs increase. And it's hard to sustain the work without the person who initiated it. We have seen cases or businesses where the person who started it, in, once they fall sick or die, no one else can understand how they do it. No one else can even start to do what they have been doing because it was in their head. Somehow they knew how to start their day, but they never organized it for themselves or even enough to explain it to anyone else. And with a system of work, we apply reasonable effort because it's clear. Start with A, go to B. So reasonable effort is applied. Tasks are understood clearly what needs to be done. Tasks can be well planned. And we can even acquire more knowledge on what we, are known to, we find that we are unable to do well. And through the experience of doing the work over time, we begin to get experience on how to save time, how to save resources, how to do it better. And that is the value of the system of work that we have been talking about. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Okelo, if I gave you some five minutes, are you able to share with us what has system of work meant for you? Where, what, you, what you were doing before, how it has helped you. So you're welcome. Okay, God is good. All the time. <laughs> and all the time. So my name's are Alex and she is Okelo, is what we share. Um, we come from Gayaza. So we run a pharmacy called St. Eliza Healthcare Services. Um, we were invited in the Midis ministry by a friend of us called James, and for him he was concerned of the family. So we came actually looking at the, the family, and actually we came when they were talking about family order, and it, that was our first thing which made us get stuck here, because we were coming from a family which is, you know, and then somehow we loved it, but along the way, we started now going into system of work. And then when we came here, we really had a struggle within us, so many struggles. Number one is that we were running a business, uh, but which had spiritual parents who had sponsored the business. And so when we want to grow to another level, our spiritual parents say, you cannot go there. You are still young. You don't know the things. And so somehow it was stressing the two of us, and especially for her, because she is passionate about touching people, treating. But a pharmacy, you are just selling things. So that was one thing. And so when we said, uh, I think let's go and talk to Mr. Mwesik about this and find out what, what would he think about. And it was a blessing to really share through and getting comfort and to say, okay, we, we children also grow, okay? And when they grow, they can actually bear much fruit. And so we got courage to be able to share with our spiritual parents. And it was so easy. But before that, we were really struggling to, to how do we craft the thing together. So in the end, now we, together with the, 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 the team, we are now going to register a company different. And the spiritual parents are also happy about it. And we are also happy about it. And all this was because, you know, comfort of uh, what Mr. Mesiga says, truthfulness, openness, you know, and ensuring things are moving on well. I know I talk a lot. So now um, uh, the other issue really which we were talk struggling with was um, managing staff. 
And then for us, we came from a very spiritual background and we say all staff must be included in the discussion. They must handle the money. They must do everything. So now in the discussions, it was asked us now, who are the owners of the business? And why don't you organize and see? I think there were those things we were told, who is the handsman, who is the manager, who is the what? And when we now sat together again, I think when I was here, I'd not yet understood, but when we sat together, then we were able to understand. And from that time, I think now staff are beginning to understand. Well, we to come, huh? okay? And then why, where there is where. So the, the, the work is actually getting very organized. I think even last week we had a meeting with the staff and we were giving them clear roles. And they were all getting their roles and, and things are becoming better and, and better. And since I talk a lot, allow me first, allow her to, to say a few words before I spend the whole day. <laughs> The five minutes are already done. <laughs> well, another thing that we have learned this year that has carried us through, as he said, we do ministry. So for us, work was work and ministry was ministry. So if I'm at church, I'm in ministry. If I'm at work, I'm at work. And I love both. So... It, it was brought to a realization that actually what we are doing is a ministry. And we are into the hospitality ministry. And it was clear to us because it was asked a thousand times what is a hospital. I know even if I'm to ask, you'll have different definition, definitions. But to us, our hospital is a different hospital because we are doing the hospitality in the hospital. And it's not the other hospital like it is. And you, find, you go inside there and you find it is a different thing that is inside there. That it actually brutalizes the hospitality word, if I may say. And then another thing also, we have, yeah, it has enabled us. One, we had also kind of tension. We thought we are operating in negatives. We are not so much understanding our financials very well. But together with the systems that we are put in place together with the family sense, we utilized the two hours that was given to all of us at the start of the year. For us, we have really tried to utilize it. I don't know how. No, it was meant to be two hours every month or something. We have actually used too much. Maybe to some of you who have not used, probably we are using your time. Because <laughs> for us, after here, we still engage more. So it has helped us to uh, better understand our business and is the tension that we had, thinking maybe we are operating in negatives. But also, now that I'm not there, I'm not worried. I just need to reach there, like this morning I was there. Hello, hello, like people know what to do. I don't have to be in place at all the time and I don't have to get a thousand calls. Hey, msao kati wali wono supplier. Hey, kakati chino tukoze tutia. Like they don't have to call me all the time and ask, how can we do this? How can we handle so and so? How do we do with this? What do we do? And, and all that. Like I know who is... When I leave, if I leave the staff behind, I know this one is a handman. I don't have to assign them very many responsibilities. They are good at this and this, that they will handle. So if they don't handle a particular thing, I'm not stressed. Because I know that is not them. Probably I need to train them a little bit more. And I'm no longer having the negative feelings about the managers on the team. I, we had team members who are managers. And they are men. He's there sometimes, but not all the times. And when a man has the, the inbuilt ability of a manager in him, they can want to overtake you even when you are the managing director. I don't know whether you get what I mean. They are employees, but they make decisions. And it's like they are driving you. Eh? Yeah, because probably they, you have not so much told them what to do. And in them, they know what to do. Eh? in your own company. So somehow, yeah. But I, like, I no longer have negative feelings about them. I know how to handle them. I know this one I'm talking to is a manager in them. That is inbuilt in them. And it doesn't have to be me on top of everything. No. I know where I belong and I, where I can perform best in my own company. I know, and I know the leaders who are there and I allow them to lead 
where I know that they are strong in that area. I, uh, we cannot, I cannot miss this. Um, so recently we've been working on a business plan. Hmm? We call it Bizinare here, eh? a Bizinare plan. It was amazing for me. I had, we had a, a plan which was around uh, a few pages. But the way this plan has evolved, actually when Mr. Mesuka sent it to us, I first looked at it, I'm like, is this what we sent? Oh, like it looked new, very fresh, and very, uh, okay. What I want to say, we had a business plan, which is simply for when somebody says, hey, you have a business plan, then you present that one. Do you implement it? Zero. Do you? <laughs> so so we, we, that, that's the kind of issues when we're talking about the system of work is what in these meetings they have emphasized. A business plan must be a plan that you implement. Ours was for maybe resource mobilization and so on when people bring and then actually they would actually, I sent it to Stan Big Bank and they were saying, oh, we know this is just for, for, for money, but you don't utilize this. <laughs> we know it. So, but this other one which we are making, uh, and I know, uh, and, uh, it's a day-to-day -a -day thing. Uh, it was my first time to see a business plan which has scriptures. <laughs> which are alive, eh? you read and you're like, did I ever read, I, did I ever read this thing in the Bible? It, it's like, it's like uh, by the way, I, I try to do ministry and try to speak to schools and everything. But there are some scriptures in that Bible, in that what now I'm calling it Bible, in that business plan, which is, the, which is like I have never read in the what? In the Bible. So I think really, I want to thank Mr. Mesuga and the team, one, for giving us the time to meet and also to be committed to this. We were challenged a lot, 100%, because we sometimes think we, uh, you know, we, we run for help and then they actually help. And then sometimes we even be late, you know. And these people are very committed to this work. And so we became actually very guilty one time when we reached late. We almost said, okay, now we can't come. <laughs> But you know, I'm, I really, I, let's give them a hand clap for the commitment to this, to this work. God bless you. We can talk for the whole day, I am very sure. But allow us to stop here. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Okello. Remember, we, we said we are doing business. We are building good work that will last the test of generations, that the test of time, good work that meets needs very, very well. And you know, that is why we are, we are uh, belaboring this topic of system of work, every piece of work, whether it's a church, it must have a, a what? A system, a well thought out system. And that is the process we have been going through with Mr. and Mrs. Okello that they are testifying to, you know, w w concerning their work, yes, they are saying, what need, you know? What need is it that you want to meet? Well, there are a thousand people meeting this need, but how exactly are you going to meet this need in a way that is very, very good? So you define that process. And then, okay, this is the need you want to meet. So what are the tasks? You can see arranging tasks. That is the system of work. What are these tasks that you must do in order to meet these needs? Not mixing them up, not piling them together, but one by one. What are the critical things you have to deliver in order for you to meet this need? How are you going to do them one by one? So you arrange the tasks. Remember, arranging tasks, we said, Sequencing is very important. What happens first? What happens next? What happens third? And timing. At when should you do a particular task? On how? And when shouldn't you do it? You know, timing, we said, is very important. So after arranging your tasks, each task needs certain resources in order to be implemented. It needs people. 
you know it needs particular inputs it needs money so what are these resources that are needed for each particular task counting the cost of work i remember when we were doing deploying resources we emphasized the counting the cost of doing work if you do not count the cost of delivering the work you will fail Remember that you're engaged in a family sense gathering, which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. If you do not count the cost of delivering the work, you will fail. You will either be wasteful, you will fall short, you will end up borrowing, you know and then the other one after count deploying resources deploying people we said god said it's not good for adam to be alone he needed helpers in order to fulfill his responsibility no business can stand on its own even though sometimes we like to say i am self made <laughs> the thing is no one is self made everyone needs someone and remember we mentioned suitable helpers identifying a suitable helper not everyone is suitable for that thing that you are doing even in a family as it starts it has to be a suitable helper god gives a suitable helper and how do we know that this helper is suitable remember we mentioned the issue of um competence and character and we said competence someone having the right knowledge you know the right expertise the right having the wisdom for the work and on character you know the fear of god the issues of faithfulness being hard working being diligent maybe someone who can sit in one these very depending on the job remember we looked at a nursery teacher what is the right character for a nursery teacher <laughs> huh? and what is the character for an accountant you may get a talkative active person who can't sit for even 10 minutes and you want them to sit in a corner for hours working out figures they cannot do it so identify who do you need what is the right set of competencies and character for this job that i need done so de uh, deploying people to work involves that and we said where do you get these suitable helpers we said you must you can get them either from within the family or from outside but wherever you get them and especially from within the family we emphasize the issue of setting standards you know that we are working to this standard and the standards first apply to us ourselves you first look to yourself you know you yourself have to first meet that standard before you extend it to others you know sometimes we want other people to be early on work to keep time to account for resources to and yet us ourselves who call who put the label business owner or even head of family you know or you know heads of family we do not want to apply those standards to ourselves but we say the standards first start with you and then you extend them to others um justly you know no favoritism even if it's your your the husband the oh, the uh, executive director and the wife if she doesn't do it the same way you handle those who don't do is the same standard you apply same standard to everyone and we realize that sometimes such things are not easy that is why some people say ah let her go and work somewhere else and me somewhere else for peace and we will meet at the end of that day 
you know, and share stories. So that is the, those are the things that we are looking at in the system of work. Arranging tasks, deploying resources, deploying people, and then giving account. The, last, the, the earlier sessions of the year, we've covered the first three. Today we want to talk about giving account. So today we are moving to the, that one, giving account. And before we start accountability, I just want to ask a question here. When the, someone says accountability, what comes to your mind? To talk about the money I was given, what did I do with it? Is there a balance or mm. it's not there? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So is there a different perspective? Someone else that wants to add to that? Yes, behind there. Thank you so much. I also have an experience about giving account. Yes. Where I work is mm. feedback. Mm. When I take students to a trip, yes. sometimes the you can even draft the feedback before you go. And then the honesty yeah. again, we read the scripture. Yeah. So the feedback we give in form mm. of a report. Yes. Because it has to be even filed. Mm. The bursa needs a copy, the hetia needs a copy, and maybe the patron. Yes. So when you're giving account in that field of where I teach, mm. is a report. Mm. What transpired? Where did you go? And of course, it implies things of finance. Mm. So us there, it's always a report. It may not even include the figures sometimes, mm. but where did you take the students? What did you do there? And mm. any lessons, any challenges? Yes. It's feedback. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. For me, I say accountability refers to, for any task you are given, you have to give uh, okay, feedback concerning, uh, concerning, okay, from the very small tasks somebody uh, is given uh, at home, and uh, in our places of work, in each and every, in every, in the, in other, in each and everything that you do, yes, you are held uh, accountable. Accountable. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. I remember the first time that I was introduced. It's amazing because we we give accountability all through our lives, but somehow it doesn't strike. For me, the first time that word started striking in my mind is when I had just finished university and I got my first job. It was almost immediately. So when I got to that job, I was told you're a social economist research assistant. Never mind that I had no idea what it meant, but that was my job. And the moment I got there, they told me on Monday, you're going to accompany a scientist to Masindi who is introducing a technology, and you're the social scientist for accompanying him. Okay, I went and packed my bag. But part of it is they give you money. So I, I was given this money to pay for the fuel, uh, for my per diem, and to manage uh, field expenses. So when I came back, I knew I had to write a report. What happened? Although I didn't know what a social economist was. And then... The other most important one I had to account to, to report, they, um, you gave me this amount of money for this. This is what it did. These are the receipts. I sat down and did it very well, put my things in a file, and started walking to the accounts office. And as I was going, someone stopped me, uh, an older staff member, and said, where are you going? I said, I'm taking my accountability to the finance office. And he said, let me see. So he sat down and laughed. And he said, are you out of your mind? Bring it. So he took it away from me for a whole weekend. And on Monday, he gave it back to me. He said, this is my money. This is yours. Take this to the accounts office. Do you think those people you're giving the money back are going to put it back? Don't do such things again. And so that was my initiation into <laughs> accountability. You know, we understand it as report for the money. Why? Because we need more money. And you can see even in our government offices, when it's the end of, you know, we will not get more money if we don't account for this. Never mind how 
your account. The thing is just give them. And so that is the first lesson I got on accountability. So what is accountability? For us, we are here to go back to the truth. Okay? So we are saying that accountability is an obligation to own up. It is an a what? An obligation to own up. An obligation. That is the first word that I want us to focus on. It is an obligation. Something you do because you have to. It is your duty to do it. It is your duty to deal with that matter. So it is an obligation. Many times we take accountability as something which you can do if you feel like. Or maybe you just do because you're forced. Okay? But especially when people are the owners of businesses or the bosses, then they feel it's for others, not for them. But here we are saying it is a duty. It is a duty to own up. You have to do it willingly or unwillingly. You know, you have to, you can choose to own up willingly. You can choose to own up unwillingly, but it must be done. It must be done. And you see, in general, we have a tendency of wanting to own up to things which are good. And the moment things are not so good, then we are unwilling to own up. We are unwilling to become accountable. And we can take this all the way back even maybe to Adam and Eve. Because the Bible says God used to come in the evening and, you know, spend time with them. Possibly before things went wrong, they were eager to come and tell him how that day went. But that day things went wrong, you know. That day things were not so good. There was a reluctance. And even when God demanded you know what have you been up to? What happened? Mm, this woman, this one, the one you gave me, you are the one. Who, everything was good when it was us, but you brought her, this woman. You know? And when God went to Eve to ask, what happened? Eve said, the snake. Mm? It was that one. The snake looked left and right and there was no one else to, to blame, you know. So we don't want to own up when things are, are not so good. And we want to own up even what is our, is not ours when they are good. Yeah? Even if you didn't really contribute or play a part, somehow you want to own it, you know, when things. And this happens in our families. We can see it in our families. Hmm? You know, I'm like, the, I'm this way because of my parents. If it hadn't been for these parents of mine, if it hadn't been for my upbringing, you know, I wouldn't be like this, you know. Or oh, these children, if only they would listen, their place wouldn't be like this. I have a difficult boss. The man doesn't listen. The boss is the reason things are the way they are. You have not led a church like mine. Those people are big-headed. Hmm? You preach and it's like the message is, you know, somehow when things are not so good, my teammates, you know you work hard, but those teammates just let you down. Somehow, we, we, we really have fingers to point everywhere except to ourselves. But we are coming back to the truth. And we are saying <laughs> that we are all obliged to own up. And what are we owning up to? What are we owning up to? We are owning up to the state of matters, the way things are. The state of matters that results from three things. That results 
from our thoughts, you know, or our words, or our actions. Because you see, everything that comes about is as a result of the, our thoughts, is a result of our words, and is a result of our actions, you know? So what, account what does accountability involve? If we would look into Genesis chapter 1, um, Genesis chapter 1, it is saying the account of creation. And in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deep waters. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light was good. Then he separated light from darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. So we see here that God saw the state of things and he saw something undesirable. You know, it was formless. It was empty. It was dark. You know, water everywhere. And he said, he decided to do something about it. And he spoke. And when he spoke, something happened as a result of his words, as a result of his words, his command, something happened. So that was now, there was an undesirable state of matters. He spoke and a better or another state of matters resulted. And he said, and he saw there was light and that the light was good. You know, he saw that it was good. He looked at it. He saw that it had turned up the way he intended, that it did what it in, he wanted it to do. Perhaps he asked himself, is it working well? And when he ticked all those boxes, he said, it is good. You know, he actually examined it. He checked it. He checked what he was doing, you know, showing us that even God is accountable to himself. He examines what he does. No matter the scripture tells us that he watches over his words to fulfill them. Even the words he's spoken, he watches over to make sure he has done what he said he will do. So what about us? You know, what about us? Do we watch our words to be accountable for our words? Are we accountable for our thoughts, our actions? Oh, we are like, it is bad. All of us just complaining and doing nothing to change it, you know? And then if you continue to verse 9, it says, Then God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so that the dry ground may appear. And this is what happened. God called the dry ground land and the water seas and God saw it was good. He went on commanding a state of a certain state to come about. He examined each one and when it was satisfactory, when it was doing what it was supposed to do and working well, he gave it a tick and then moved on. Continuous check. But do we do this? in our own work, in our families? Do we do this? We can also look at another example in Matthew 16. Matthew 16 from um, verse 13 to 16. If someone will please read. King James translation. He says, when Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, what do men say? that I, the Son of Man, am. And they said, Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. 
and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. You see, in this scripture we see, we even take a lesson from Jesus. He had been working with these particular people, walking within, with, uh, with this group of 12 and the others that were following, teaching them, working all these miracles, and he wanted to check really how far have these people gone. Do these people understand what we are doing? Do these people understand where we are going? Do these people understand who I am? You know? And he said, he, he first tested them, who do those ones say I am? What do the others say we are? What do the others say I am? And they answered. And he said, what about you? You know? What about you? Again, this is Christ making a continuous check. Do these people understand what we are doing? Do they understand where we are going? You know? In your work, all these people following you, do they understand? You know? It is about having continuous checks. Do they understand what we are doing? Where we are going? How we are doing it? Continuous checks. You know? Um, I would also like us to read Luke 16 from verse 1. Jesus also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who was informed of accusations that his manager was wasting his assets. So he called the manager in and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Turn in the account of your administration because you can no longer be my manager. Then the manager said to himself, what shall I do? Since my master is taking my position away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm too ashamed to beg. I know what to do so that when I am put out of management, people will welcome me into their homes. So he contacted his master's debtors one by one. He asked the first, How much do you owe my master? The man replied, A hundred measures of olive oil. The manager said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and write 50. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? The second man replied, a hundred measures of wheat. The manager said to him, take your bill and write 80. The master commended the dishonest manager because he acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their contemporaries, and the people of light. New English translation. Thank you very much. And here we see uh, Jesus speaking of a manager, you know, whose boss discovered that this guy is not doing certain things well. And, and this is a common state of affairs among us today, in, you know, in our work, unfortunately. So, when the, money, the boss discovered that things are not going well, he asked him to give an account. And this man knew he was not going to, to pass. And he said, this man is going to fire me. But let me make some friends out there so that if I lose here, at least I have somewhere to go. And in his crafty way, in his crafty way, he went to each person, pull out your record. You know? You understand? How much do you owe? Slash. Pull out your record. How much do you owe? Slash. You know? Imagine if this record wasn't there. You know? Because even this manager didn't seem to know exactly how much each of these people owed. You know? But they slashed, and he took some report to the manager, to the boss. And at the end of the day, the rich man had to admire that this, he's still dishonest. The Bible has said, my version says, the dishonest ra um, rascal for being so shrewd. <laughs> he was dishonest, but he gave his what? 
accountability. But is this how we should account? No, but he's admired because he managed to do something. He managed to give some sort of accountability. Are you able to give accountability? Not, not like this shrewd one, but an upright accountability. Because this man was a steward. He was taking care of someone's business. And it reminds me of Psalms 24, verse 1, concerning each one of us. Psalms 24, verse 1. Can someone please read it? The Lord owns the earth and all it contains, the world and all who live in it. Yes. The Lord owns the earth and everything it contains. The world and every single person that is what? Belongs to the Lord. It means that each one of us is a steward. Whether we want to or not, we are actually stewards. And I think it helps us to realize that we are. Even that business of yours, you are a? For that church you are pastoring, you are? For that school you are running, you are? A steward. For that child in your hands, you are? A steward. And you must give an account to God. So what kind of accountability are you going to, to give? So it is helpful to us. You can't do anything well when you don't know what you have. This man at least knew his customers. He knew, he had a record, this shrewd manager, this rascal, <laughs> that I, there is Tom, the other side, he owes. There is Beatrice, the other side, she owes. He knew them. Do you even know? Do you have a record? You know? So each of us is a steward. If God himself owns up his work, then what about us? We, are all, we all have a duty to own up on what we are doing, to give account of how things are. All right? Um, can we also look at this scripture in Romans 14, 12? Therefore, each one of us will give an account of himself to God. Yes. Thank you very much, Pastor Michael. It is just short and sweet and very clear. <laughs> it says that, yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. And I think in our work and in our families, we call this family sense, you know? This is important for us to, to realize. I don't know, for me, it, it helps me I say to myself mm, <laughs> that I will give a personal account of everything that is holding me accountable for to God, that I will have to give an a personal account. I cannot, that means I have to stop saying this, this man. Hmm? That means I have to stop just saying this woman. Hmm? That means I have to now own up for my words and the result that comes from them. You know these words we speak bring about a certain result. And God is saying, now watch them because you are accountable for that result. So we are owning up for our words. We are taking responsibility for our words, for their, our actions everywhere. And our thoughts and the result of, of them. And when we start seeing these things this way, and when we start seeing it as a personal responsibility, then the way we do work begins to change. I'm telling myself, <laughs> I'm telling all of us, the way we do our work now should begin to change. The way we conduct ourselves in relationships, in business, everywhere that the Lord places at begins to change because it's not just for you. It's my money for me. Hmm? And this also calls us, it, it, you, you will notice owning up also has two facets. As we've said, it requires honesty. As we've said, when things are not so good, sometimes we want to give dishonest account. You saw this shrewd man. Hmm? 
we want to give accountability, but you know, to your boss, you give that accountability that makes you look good. So it requires honesty, true, true owning up. And then it also requires humility. Let's say you're the boss and you come, you gave instructions, these are our expense lines and you arrive in your business and say, mwana ampa yom tualo from the drawer. You know? And that little one tries to humbly say, sir, nguandi kewa obuzani, who are you asking? <laughs> this is my what? <laughs> business. <laughs> who are you? Eh? Which goes back to our homes. Everyone with their cars here. No one wanting to give account. You know? So, but this lifts the bar, raises the bar for us who are creating business. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering, which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. So, but this lifts the bar, raises the bar for us who are creating business and building families that honor God. So it is a continuous check of each step of your work. As we've been talking about work, is the work, and we said that the purpose of work is to meet needs. Isn't that what we said? The purpose of work is to meet needs. So uh, is this work? You're continually checking. We said that we are going to meet a need B. But is this work really meeting the intended need? Is this hospital being hospitable? Or is it creating more casualties? Is it really meeting intended needs? Okay. And what is the quality? of what you're producing. Are we producing anyhow? You know, there is this phrase that took me long to understand. Chijakola anga samona. What is that? Is it that one? Is it chikola anga samona? Hey, it will do. It will serve. It is not exactly it, but it will, it will pass. Hmm? It will pass. You know, one time I was rushing to do a report and the diagram, the picture just wasn't getting sharp enough. Someone was helping me and sending. So I mentioned to Mr. Mwesigwa, and he said, how? <laughs> you know, that those are the statements we must delete out of. It is either the right quality of output or just don't do it. This business of uh, it will do, which we are very good at doing here in, 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 in our population. It will do. Hmm? Just put, rub here, here, dress, dress the front. It will do. Let's not waste time. So is it meeting? Is the, what is the quality of output? Is it meeting what we said? And of course, this goes back to your building your system of work. When you're saying you're going to deliver a certain product, what output, I mean what quality of output did you say? Realize you have to define it so you know it. And then when you're owning up, you're asking yourself, are we producing the quality we said we, we would? What about the quantity? Is this quantity you're checking the quantity of output. And you're checking the use of resources. How well are we using our resources? So that is what we are con keeping a continuous check of. We are keeping a continuous check of. And why waste our time with all this anyway? Why? Should someone waste their time with all this? We are saying to maintain goodness. Didn't we say 
good work that passes, that, that lasts the test of generations. We are talking about a visionary, not anything, not anyhow, but a good service in church, a good service in Sunday school. Is it good? What is it producing the intended result in these children? Or oh, they are just children. We are keeping them busy here so that they don't disturb the parents. As you're teaching, P1, A, B, C, what is the use? What is it supposed to produce? Is it good? If it's good, then we want to maintain the goodness. If it's not good, then we want to learn how to do better. That is the purpose of accountability, to maintain goodness, because otherwise, so you account then what? If the, your, your continuous checks and your continuous observations and examinations, if they are not helping you answer these two questions, then it's useless. Is it helping you determine whether it's good? So that you keep doing what you have been doing to keep producing the good result? If you're not, then what do you need to do to actually be, even if you're good, what can you do to be better? And then, you know, sometimes as we are working, we do a lot of things that really produce good results. But if someone calls you and asks you, what exactly did you do? You may not know. You may not know what it is that you actually did that made that good result. Or you may not even realize that it wasn't just me. But when I, Mrs. Kayondo, did my role, and also Mrs. Uh, um, Pastor Lucy Chisa did her role over there, the combination of the two under certain condition produced this good result. Therefore, in order for me to keep doing good, I must partner with and make sure that these conditions are in place. That is the purpose of accountability. Otherwise, you make a, a report of how you spent the money, you add shrewdness in it, and you submit so that the next quarter, more money is released. And it's not helping you as an organization get any better, even as a business. It, you don't know, is it, are you doing good? You don't even know how to get better, but you are just doing. Okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Um, yes, I would like to invite Mr. Mwesigwa briefly. <laughs> what is your accountability for what you are thinking? Now imagine if we had these guys from Megapix and their cameras are really just being able to read what we are thinking. <laughs> How many of us would be comfortable with the photographs that would go through? Oh, no, so not photographs, but mind graphs. <laughs> if only every husband could get a, a mind graph of their wives, and every wife, <laughs> if only people could read the mind graph of each other, I think it would help us to adjust what we are thinking. Hallelujah. Those are hard things. Even, I, and, and it is hard. But you see, whatever we think eventually gets revealed in what we speak and even in what we do. I might hide it a little bit, but it eventually what? Shows up. And it shows up at the least expected times. Sometimes like a bust up. And it can be terrible. But the questions that are being asked, learn to maintain what? Goodness. Oh, how am I raising 
all. How am I taking care of Mrs. Mwesigwa? Mm. Let me try to look through and see. Please, you can do it if you want to for, for your, the other, that one. You understand? Mm -hmm. But for me, I have to do mine. I have to do what? Mine. Personally, how am I doing with my wife? What, by the way, am I thinking about her? Uh oh. Hmm. Could she be a stupid woman? Okay. Hmm. Mm. Do we ever bother, by the way, to ask ourselves what we are thinking? What thought has led me to speaking this? Even how did I get to act the way I'm acting today? Those are tough questions. We only think of accountability when it is a parliament asking a minister to go up. And that's what we think. But let me tell you something. I should not do accountability because it is a partial in, in fulfillment of the requirements of the rules of parliament or of government. I have to do personal accountability every day. And the first question I always receive from Mrs. Mwesigwa every morning. How is the day going to move? A woman, a wife, asking who? Can you imagine? <laughs> How is the, uh, the day? <laughs> and you know what? To be very sincere with you, I set it up myself. And then, did I set myself into a trap to be asked these questions? <laughs> How to get? Yeah, because Yale in our, our getting it together, she had not been exposed to accounting altogether. And accounting is not, you know when we say accounting, eh? Mrs. Mwes, uh, Mrs. Kayondo talked at, uh, eh? we always think in terms of what? Money. Money. But I am moving out and I am going to this place to meet such and such a place, to meet such and such a person for such and such a reason. That was set as a minimum standard in the kingdom of Mwesigwa. Minimum what? Ay, 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 Hello, man. <laughs> oh, those are hard things. I am going here to meet so and so on over this matter. Yes. By the way, how does an, a, 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 a thief in a, in a house account to his family? <laughs> <laughs> that is, this money which I am bringing, if we are really, really to put these things straight, uh, that I got it from by doing what? Hello? Those are real hard things that you know I, I, I slaughtered someone <laughs> to accounting for thoughts, words, and doing what? Actions. Because they always have an effect. And it is thoughts, words, and actions. That's the bottom line of life. Just look back. Today is Saturday. How many words have you spoken since Monday? How many words have you spoken since Monday? <laughs> if you were to be held accountable for your words, and many of which you have even probably forgotten, except those in, uh, involving, uh, come, I, we, uh, I, I pay you. <laughs> yeah, those ones we don't for, forget, eh? Uh, payment, uh, those ones there we don't, but things we have spoken to people. And Mrs. Kayondo is the one who read things. He said at the end of the first day, he, he saw it was what? Good. So if you look back at the things you have thought, 
in a day. And you want to hold yourself accountable. How have my thoughts been today? Who should ask that account, account from you? How have my thoughts been today? Who should ask that account from you? Who? Personal. It's a personal responsibility. How have my thoughts been today? Get a pen, get a paper. What did God do? At the end of every day, he looked what? Back. And he saw it was what? Good. So if I look back and Mrs. Kayondo, is it good? It's the question I should ask myself. The things I have done what? Thought. Are they truly good? If they are not, what do I do? I do number two. two. How do I make them what? Better. Everything in this world is a result of thoughts. And the quality of my thinking actually greatly determines the quality of my life. That's the thing. And if my thoughts are poor, if my thoughts are destroyed, if my thoughts are murderous, I'm just going actually to murder. And that's the way. What is the quality of my thoughts? It's a good question for each one of us to hold themselves accountable to every day. Give an account. What did we think when we began that? Look at the pens we are using. What is the result? Where did those pens come from? Somebody thought. And he created, because God create, put in us his what? Image. His creative abilities are within us. So if the quality of our thoughts is not good, we are going to become mediocres in the process of an economy. We are going to become mediocres in what we do. And there is no way I'm going to improve my thinking if I'm not holding myself what? accountable. What am I thinking? How have my thoughts been today? It's extremely important. And I'm not telling you to do it. I'm telling myself to do it. And that's part of what I do every day. I don't conclude my day without reflecting back at what I, what have I thought through today? Ay, 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 ay. You can imagine what goes through me. And you can imagine how many things I have to repent for every day. <laughs> don't think this is a clean mind. I have to remove so much garbage every day. Pastor Kisa, for me, man, I'm not a clean one. I have to clean up every day. My sewerage has to be, <laughs> to be functioning very well. Accountability gets to that level. Why? Unless you speak thoughtlessly. But many times we speak things after we have thought through them. So I have to even check what, from my thoughts, what have I spoken for what the, the heart is full of, such shall a mouth do what? Speak. speak. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. What does it say? Uh, Matthew 12, verse 33 to 37. Matthew 12, mm. verse 33 to 37. Mm. I'm reading from the New English Translation. Mm. Make a tree good, mm -hmm. and its fruit will be good. Yes. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Offspring of vipers, how are you able to say anything good since you are evil? For the mouth speaks from what fills the heart. The good person brings forth good things out of his good treasury. And the evil person brings forth evil things out of his evil treasury. 
I tell you that on that day of judgment, people will give an account for every worthless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Minimum standards. Where do, are the words coming from? From, the heart. from inside myself. And what is inside yourself is our thoughts. Which he talks about in Matthew chapter 9 verse 4. Just to connect that thing. Because it's very important for us to look at it. Matthew chapter 9 verse 1. To 4. To 4. After getting into the boat... He crossed to the other side and came to his own town. Yep. Just then, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Have courage, son. Your sins are forgiven. How did he see their faith? Their actions. By what they were doing. Yes. What color is faith? <laughs> How big is it? How tall is it? Or how short? But you see someone doing it, say, he saw their faith. Uh -huh. Verse number three. Mm -hmm. Then some of the experts in the law say to themselves. The what? Experts in the law say to themselves, this man is blaspheming. When Jesus saw. They told who? They said to themselves. To, to who? To themselves. Mm -hmm. This man is blaspheming. When Jesus saw their reaction, he said, why do you respond with evil in your hearts? Now we keep talking about psychology. That's the basic. Evil inside is seen by now the words we are speaking and the actions we are taking. Some Bible even say, he saw their Thinking. That's how exactly life works. You think, then you speak, and then you do. Now, whatever you do, whatever you think, whatever you've spoken, is what sums up to what becomes your life. So, giving an account... Going back in the evening and check out, what, how have I thought? How were my thoughts today? How were my words today? How were my actions today? Day by day. Some people choose to brand it monitoring and evaluating. A personal monitor, a personal evaluation. Every day. And what is the intention? Maintain goodness or do what? Learn to function better. But how will you do that if you don't keep a record? How will you do that if you don't keep a diligent record of what you are thinking, what you are speaking, and what you are doing every day? How? And you know the only record we remember is the day I was paid. I get paid on the 30th of the mass, isn't it? Right? I get paid on what? 30th. My, is my money on account? Very good. Now when it gets there, then we begin to spend. How many of us have a record of what they have spent this week? In their personal lives. If I fail to do a personal accountability, I would even fail to give accountability in everything I'm involved in. In the work I'm involved in. In the business I'm involved in. In everything. That is the way. How will I know I am wasting? Unless I have a record and say, mm, but I think this I didn't spend properly. On this matter. How will I know. I am using enough. 
or I am using more than I need to unless I keep a record. Keeping record is part of how we actually must do things. Record keeping should be part of it. I have been in the consultancy business for a long time. And I have seen how many businesses have failed because they don't keep sound and proper records. And when you try to encourage somebody to keep a record, they feel too heavy for one reason. Because it is not in them. And actually, you keep record only because URA requires them. Only because, you know, I'm going to find some funding. And what do they do? They find, ah, where, is, where are your accounts for the last audited accounts for the last three years? Do you know why they ask for audited accounts? Because they say, you you, it's a legal requirement. Let's not keep accountability because it's a legal requirement. But as a personal discipline, what is the day like today? That's a question. After greeting Mrs. Mwesigwa, the next thing, what is the day like? Now imagine if my thoughts were confused. What will I be telling her? And after she's that, and she has a way of keeping those things inside her. Then in the evening, I come back. You didn't tell me about the other. Maybe some three days later. Hello. <laughs> eh? And if I have certain things I'm going to do outside of which are not exactly clear, uh -huh, or they are nice, eh? what's going to happen? How is the kind of record I'm going to give? Is that accountability? I'm not going to talk about, to begin with, these big, big, big things, big report. No, 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 basics. Without record, it is impossible to actually give account. A record of my thoughts, a record of my words, a record of my actions every day. Let me tell you something. It is hard work when you are starting it. It's just like a baby starting to walk. They find it so hard to walk. When they make it a personal display, at first when you try it, beginning now, say, from today, you might even be resolving inside you, I must give an account. Believe me, you will fail even a hundred times as you try it. It is hard work. Yet when you begin to make it what? A discipline. A discipline. A discipline. It becomes so easy. It becomes just part of your life and such a joy all the time. Are we together? But you know we are used to writing only to make sure we have notes which we shall reread to go and answer a what? An examination. That is the way we are. We were never told the reality you know, that the teachers here did not tell us why we should actually write down the things they teach us. Only for now exam. Oh, yeah, where are my notes? <laughs> and that's why we see we write so many things even in church. Eh? And we never read them. Why do we Don't even waste your time to write those things if you're not going to reflect upon it. Hello. Hey, it is tough, but we have to actually face ourselves. If we are only going to make any change in our lives, we've got to get to that level. So accountability is not in a partial requirement of whatever. No. It's a personal discipline. We have to make. Many businesses have collapsed because they have failed to account. And sometimes the account, you know, accounting for money, the money, money, this finance, is only a reflection of how you are thinking, how you are speaking, 
and how you are doing things. It is purely reflection. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Money, this finance, is only a reflection of how you are thinking how you are speaking, and how you are doing things. It is purely a reflection. It's not the real thing. If you are doing very, very well, it will reflect in increasing what? Assets. If you are doing badly, it will, incre it will reflect in, in what? Increasing liabilities, period. That's what it is. How I'm thinking, how I'm speaking, how I'm doing. If I give a wrong instruction, bah, believe me, it can be very costly and very dangerous. One word can destroy an entire staff team. One word like this. You guys who are here are very stupid and I hate your hair. I never want to see you. They will, when they disappear the next day, what happens? What? Does that stop me from speaking very hard words? I'll tell you, but you man. You are acting very what? Foolishly. Ay, 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 ay. If you want to know, you ask my son, Pascal, here. <laughs> she has faced it. Because I'm abusive, at a time when a person needs it, eh? what? Needs it. When he needs it, I, 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 you put it there. And it's, and it's discomforting, but it is there. And I, I have to follow up on the what? On the word. What's the effect? How do I handle that? <laughs> I, why? Because I own the word. It's me who spoke it. What was the mind behind it? Eh? Thought. To abuse him? What was the, if he can understand this as, this is actually how a foolish person works. And, and as I, and I have to, me the one to follow the word. The word. N not him who had it. Because if he follows it up without me following up, what's going to happen? It's going to destroy us. Words. How did I speak that word? What was the effect of that word which I spoke? By the how many careless words do we speak? Yeah. Men will give an account for what? For every word? Careless, word? careless words we spoke. So by the time I pull out a word, I've already checked out what is the thought behind this word. And really, any work, any business, any enterprise is built on the foundation of what? Thoughts, words, and actions. Okay? And somebody is telling us, we give an account to maintain what? Goodness. And learn to function better. Learn to do better. So, mm, okay. I'm not speaking as well as I need to. The effect of my words is not as good as it needs to. So I need to improve what I speak, how I speak, when I speak, with whom I speak. You see how accountability is meant to do? That's how it is. So, I am keeping a record of what I'm thinking, what I'm, do, what I'm speaking, what I'm doing. Two, I compile them. I compile them into a correct. Are you seeing this? What is the standard? Correct, complete, and clear report of those thoughts, of those words, and of those actions. 
Now many times we gather. It's not enough to merely record. It's not enough to merely have what? A record of the things. Please compile them. Organize them in a sensible way. Organize whatever you have in a sensible what? way. It will help you to see what's the purpose for which I'm compiling this report. Is the data set I'm using up to date? And make sure, don't try to use vocabulary. You know, sometimes people use bombastic words, very heavy words, things which are, come on, no, 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 no. And please, I have to give that report, by the way, to Mrs. Mwesigwa. So I have to find the best words to, ex to be able to tell a correct, first of all, the first should be what? Correct, correct, don't miss this order. Correct, complete, and what? Clear. can imagine. I want to tell you how, how, how heavy it can be. Um, I, I, I serve with some of the people who are here because we, uh, the team runs. What was the most recent accountability I had to give to you for my words? Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. There is a, you made a journey from Namuaya to Luero. And he had, uh, uh, I think, he, uh, a talk, or he, he met some people on the way. <laughs> and uh, those people, we know them, they stop you, the traffic, uh, the police. So he, he said uh, there, there's a lie that he, <laughs> he, he was, I think the traffic police were asking some questions and he lied so he I had did it lie he, he said a lie <laughs> i did it it say a lie huh? <laughs> i denied uh, no I did, he, did i lie <laughs> so he had to account for the lie he had even to report himself and say i lied to the police and he didn't deny it yes the issue is uh I tend, on a very sincere note, I tend to be very, very, very careful with how I drive. And I labor to make sure I keep within the rules. You remember rules? And not merely being in the rules, knowing, not keeping the rules because I will be grabbed by a police person, but because I know how important actually to maintain what? The rules because it keeps order. That particular day, I seemed to want to rush. And the Lord let me actually into the rush. And I attempted to overtake. At a wrong place. At a wrong place. <laughs> and here you are, the police officer flags me down. And I come here and uh, I, uh, I park by the roadside. My wife was by neighboring me here, and some, some two children and four grandchildren in the same uh, car. Then when he saw me, he wisely did what? Asked me to step out of the car. For me, I stayed on my steering wheel. Usually, I, when I do wrong, what do I do? I actually accept my wrong. This time, I was... Uh, uh. <laughs> 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 and then he told me, hey, step, step out of the car. I stood up. There is, then he took me a distance away. Where there were no... And he wasn't actually asking for a bribe. He really, really was seeking to be kind to me. 
he wasn't seeing a young man. You know, many times I also know which ages to try to subdue. Then he told me something. Yes, um, you have done wrong. No. What was that? Was it a denial? Was it a lie? What, what was it? <laughs> but it's a denial anyway, not a lie. Then, then didn't I tell a lie? It was in a certain a straight lie, but that is it. And then he asked me a second time. I refused. So he chose it to ticket me. I say I will pay it gladly. What do you think was going on inside me then? And he ticketed me. Now that one I paid immediately. From my mobile phone, that was finished. The issue is not the ticketing or anything, but the accountability for my words. And when I drove further, after about five minutes of moving, going back to the car I moved, I actually was prompted to tell Everyone in the, in the car, what I discussed with who? Nobody would have known that I told a lie. Nobody. Nobody. None of the people was, because the man actually moved away. And it had to be a personal what? Accountability. To who? To God himself. You can't imagine what went inside me. And if I claim to be nation builder, what that single word would have done. And believe me, I'm being very real to you. I would not even be worthy to stand here to speak to you anything. I gave an account to <laughs> the children and grandchildren who were in my house, in the car. But something else happened. The first reaction, the first reaction was from a grandchild. I didn't know even big people do what? Tell I. <laughs> yes! Ah. You're talking accountability is just me and go write some things which you like. By the way, could I cover up and say nothing? Even with these children, even with my wife? Yes, I could just clean up and appear to be clean, uh, sinless pastor. You know, sinless what? Oh yeah, I chose personally to let them know what could have stayed between me and me says maybe. But I chose to give an account. And I choose to give that same account here. It's the very reason I'm giving an account where? Here. So that you may not look at a clean man, but a man who is also struggling with his own what? Journey towards his destination that he sometimes will fail. Even you will sometimes do what? Fail to stand. But one thing I am sure of, I did wrong. One thing I'm sure of, I was ready to release where I went wrong. And one thing I'm sure of, I am totally forgiven for that word. And I don't hold myself guilty. Now, not even to the grandchild who said, I didn't know big people lie. Does that turn me into a liar? No. But did I lie? Yes, I did. If I continue doing that, then I'm branded what? The liar. So you might make mistakes along the journey. You might make errors. 
Actually, let me put it this way. You will sin. Clean up. Don't hide away. And I've given you an example. I haven't hide. If you ever thought this guy doesn't sin. Mr. Okiru, I am a sinner. Who also needs what? Mercy. And to be forgiven. And I don't tell people other things which I don't want to live by. Even when I fail. Numbers 13 verse 26. Now here these guys had been promised. Okay? They had been promised a land. Go and do what? Explore the land. The good land that I am giving you. Go and explore for yourself. Get, have a, a feeling of it. And true, they went. And they didn't just pick anybody. They picked the best among them. Those who were leaders in the nation. People who were the cream of the nation. Go and explore the what? The land. In short, they came back to Moses and Aaron. And the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. Guys, we went there. Things were so good. Listen to verse 27. They gave Moses what? This account. We are talking about accountability. And what was the account? We went into the land to which you sent us. And indeed it flows with milk and honey. Here is its, its fruit. But. Can we all together say? But. The people who live there are powerful. And the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. In short, the Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. But, what was the bad meant to be? They, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, he was one of those who went, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. The others were saying, but we cannot do anything. But have they got the data? Have they seen things as they are? You know, we, our land, Uganda is blessed with so many re resources. We have a doubt about that? It's powerful. It's everything. We are gifted by what? Nature. I heard that. So people know it. It is right there, right? And we say Uganda is what? Some people are saying Zabu and all those things. Eh? But then we begin to say, but corruption. But what? Corruption. And by the way, the moment you say bad corruption, what are you going to do about that? You're going to feel helpless. You're going to feel hopeless. You're going to feel angry. You're going to feel resentful. You're going to destroy yourself. But isn't that what we do? And then we begin to speak even the careless words, even the useless ones, even the destructive ones, even the what? And I'm not here to defend anybody. I'm here to stand for a cause. That something can be done. Okay? We say, <coughs> we would have done something, but I have no capital. Then you wonder, what is capital? I would have been faithful, but my salary is small. Well, how will I survive? So what are you going to do next? After saying that. What are you going to do? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
You're going to even take bribes because your salary is what? And all those things. But! So the buts are the ones which begin to distort the accountability. I would have been truthful. But what if I get ashamed? But! <laughs> How many buts are ringing inside yourself? Hi, hi, hi. I would have told these people, but they would say the I didn't know adults tell lies. So if the quality of my accountability is going to change, it has to be with overcoming the what? The bats. And say I must be larger than the what? The bats. I must be stronger than the bat and move forward. And that's part of the game. We would have done something, but there is no funding. We would have come for family sense, but we have no sponsor. When we have a big sponsor called God, let me tell you something. Let me even give you accountability. We're not doing these things because Muzungu is supplying resources here. No. That would even give us what? The equation to do wrong. And find a reason for not doing something about our families. One of the instructions, don't beg for foreign aid. That was what was told to me. Twenty Six years ago. Don't beg. All together. And I see the beauty of that instruction. But I would have missed it if I wasn't careful. I would have done what? Missed it. He's telling you don't beg for food. And which person does the so-called... Um, Put in quotes, charitable work. Put that in quotes. In Africa. Oh, in Uganda, a third world country and doesn't beg. Those are the questions we always ask. And moreover, today things seem to be much better. But in the older times, some 26 years ago, it was even much worse. Okay? But the instruction is clear. Don't beg. And there is a way God chooses to do and he keeps quiet and watches your faithfulness to it. But from 6,000 shillings, then, which was as good as three lunches today. Three lunches today are maybe something like, uh, how much? 45,000, call it. And we despise those things. God has taken a journey through a journey that has been beautiful. What? Problem free? The word is no. Littered with all kinds of what? Problems. But the purpose cannot be subdued. And that purpose up till today is what draws us together here. How together? Would have even said, would have gone for family sense. But, ha, huh, people will be hungry. And then there is no money for what? For lunch for them. You say, oh, oh, if there is no money for this heavy lunch, which will cause them to doze in the afternoon, let's take a tea. <laughs> but let the family sense be what? <laughs> be there. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. If we put but, would we even be here? So how many buts have you given to yourself 
and given excuses for not doing what you should have done. So point, overcome the buts. That's part of accountability. Overcome the what? As you keep recording the, your thoughts and your words and your actions, you will begin to edit a, what? the buts. There are so many things which you would have done and you know you haven't done and you've given excuses. The time is now. Begin acting. Okay? Let's look at Second Kings. Chapter 12. Second Kings chapter 12 is about a project. You know what? And you, need, you see sometimes we read the Bible and uh, when we are reading a book a day, we have no reason to, to doze. Isn't it? When we are watching Agatali uh, Konfufu and NTV and whatever those things are, we have no reason to do what? To doze. The moment we begin to read the Bible, somewhere where the sleep comes from, is it, <laughs> is it difficult to do what? To understand where the sleep comes from when we get into the truth. But let the truth be so clear that it actually gives you reason to read it and dump uh, even the TV. Sometimes it would be good for you to get that TV and dump it. Sometimes it would be good. I'm not saying do so, but you might think reason. Second Kings chapter 12. In the seventh year of Jehu, is that a date of accountability? Yes. Mm -hmm. Jehoash became king. Something happened. And he reigned in Jerusalem how many years? 40 years. His mother's, his mother's name was Zibia. She was from Beersheba. Josh did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years. Pastor Michael Kisa, the priest, instructed him. What helped this person to do what was right in the eyes of God? Instruction from the priest. Who is giving the instruction? The priest. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burnt incense there. Josh said to the priests, do what? This is a bit more alive, isn't it? What, that, what did he say? Collect what? All the money. Eh? All the money that is brought as sacred offerings to the temple of the Lord. The moment you say money, everybody's eye, minds begin to, to become alive, isn't it? That's exactly how it tends to be. It was then, even now. Collect the what? The money. Huh? The money collected in the census, the money received from personal vows, and the money brought voluntarily to the temple. You can choose to call that, call that collect money from various sources. That is the instruction. Collect money from various what? Sources. Listen. Let every priest receive the money do what? Receive the money from one of the what? Treasurers. Now, the word treasurers can as well be accountants, can be what? Cashiers, can be any name altogether. And let it be used to repair whatever damage is found in the temple. Second instruction here. First, collect what? Money from various what? So says. Second, do what? Use it for a particular purpose. So money is gathered for a purpose. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering, which is dedicated to equipping every man every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom 
on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. First, collect what? Money from various what? Sources. Second, do what? Use it for a particular purpose. So money is gathered for a purpose. Money gathered without purpose can be very dangerous. Let us see. Verse 6. In which year was this? In the seventh year of Jehu, Josh became king. Now let us see verse 6. But by the 23rd year of King Josh, the priests still had not prepared the temple. Were they collecting the money or not? Were they doing it for a purpose or not? Who are these? Hey, okay, let us continue. Therefore, these guys who collected the money were summoned by King Josh and asked, why aren't you repairing the damage done to the temple? He's not even asking how much money you've collected. He's actually looking at the what? What the money has, is meant to do. This money you are collecting. I told you to collect it for this purpose. Why aren't you doing what is meant to be done? I expected you, the priests, to be the most honest. The most faithful. But the priests, listen. What was their answer? Okay, what, was, what did he Take no more money from your treasurers, but hand it over for repairing the what? The temple. Have they moved away from the purpose? The purpose remains. No more money. And what did they say? Jehoiada verse 8. The priests agreed that they would not collect any more money from the people. And that they would not repair the temple themselves. And that what will they do with the money they collected for 23 years? <laughs> are they saying we are bringing back the money which we collected for 23 years but without doing what we are meant to do? Hello? So you thought corruption is a yesterday affair? And that it is not in church. I think here we have lost it. Because God does not talk about money. But first instruction. Collect money from various what? Sources. Second instruction is. Use it for a specified word. Purpose. Listen, Jehoiada the priest took a case and bowed a hole in its lid. He placed it bef beside the altar on the right side as one enters the temple of the Lord. The priests who guarded the entrance put into the chest all the money that was brought to the temple of the Lord. Whenever they saw that there was a large amount of money in the chest, and the royal secretary and the high priest came, counted the money that had been brought into the temple of the Lord, and put it into a bullion. Hey, are you hearing that? So what is this chest in the current times? Is that a safe? Without safes are a new concept. These, these things are old. They are not the concept of here we are talking about store the money securely. Store the money what? Securely. Mercy. 
Is mother teaching you how to store money securely or you just put the money there on the cupboard somewhere in the home? I'm really not talking about mother here. I'm talking about every mother and father here. What do we do? Hello? Then we blame the children for being careless and thieves. <laughs> so, collect money from various what? Sources. Two, keep it securely. Okay? Three, use it as instructed. That's what we are saying. Let's continue. Verse 11. When the amount, hey, by the way, you realize that there is a system of what? Accountability. Who is meant to be doing what? Oh, let's count the money where? Together. Let us keep a what? A record. That's exactly what they are doing here. It's an entire finance system here being dealt with. But by the way, when you read these things with a, a lazy mind, what is going to happen? You will pass over these things. But this says a lot more than what somebody can do. And there is no accounting, Mr. Okero. You can never study outside of this. People spend thousands of pounds to study these things, but they are there for us if we bother. Okay? Let us see. Verse 11. When the amount had been determined, how will you determine the amount without records? Okay? Another question. They gave the money to who? To the men appointed to supervise the work on the temple. With it, they paid those who worked on the temple of the Lord, the carpenters, the builders, the mazons, the stone cutters. They purchased timber and dressed stone for the repair of the temple of the Lord and met all the other expenses of restoring the temple. Now those are various expenditures on fulfilling a particular purpose. And if you are talking about financial accounting, it doesn't exceed that. But, finally, they brought in the temple, what was not, what was, the money brought into the temple was not spent for doing things outside of the instructions. Verse 14, it was paid to the workmen who used it to repair the temple. So uh, they are doing a correct, complete, and clear work they are doing. And what else? They did, verse 15, they did not require a what? Verse 15, are we together there? They did not require a what? An accounting from those to whom they gave the money to pay the workers because they acted with what? With complete honesty. What's the standard of accounting? No. Is it correct? Is it complete? Is it clear? Bottom line. We are talking about the standard of what? Accounting. Hey, is what I am thinking correct? <laughs> is what I am thinking complete? Is it clear? Now the battle we have is that Giving an account makes us feel like we are being pushed around like dolls eh? or like children. But you can't imagine I have to account even for how much I spent to, for, to, 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 to eat, to refresh myself here in town. I have to account to that woman there. 
There's that woman there. Don't you see I'm bound? That I was put in a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you see? I was put in a what? Man. <laughs> I wasn't I put in a bottle. By, by the way, I just a stupid man. Just a silly one. Eh? The woman controls me. Don't you see? <laughs> Hello? Don't you see the woman controlling me? But what we do, if these things are uncomfortable, eh? and he says we should obey them, eh? What you do, you get your eraser blade and cut them out and throw them out of your Bible so that they are not part of it. You go to account, ultimate account, you say, for me, my Bible, there was nothing like that. <laughs> that makes me weak, isn't it? You ask Mrs. Mwesigwa. You ask Mrs. Mwesigwa if she can push me over. You ask her. By the way, she might be finance manager or finance minister. For me, I am president. <laughs> hey, I will account. And I will hold her accountable. <laughs> and I will hold her what? <laughs> That's the thing. When she turns this, when she turns it, please, I haven't received the, uh, my accountability. There is no other way we would be able to do the things we are doing without accountability. And the first person to account is me as a leader. You know how we many times say, by the way, it's my business. It is my this. Don't set yourself up for failure and destruction. All accounting just rotates around that. One, collecting money from various what? Sources. Two, keeping it securely. Storing it securely. Three, spending as instructed. Four, giving an account. Okay? Let's put it this way. Collecting children from one source. Hey, sorry. What have I said? <laughs> you know how we gather children, eh? Do we keep them sexually? Do we grow them and raise them up according to instruction? And we, are we ready to give an account to God? A truthful account. You thought it's just about money. It's about everything. I can rotate this same word in many different angles to speak exactly the same principles. As we said, the Lord's word is full of what? Principles applied in different environments. Accountability, this giving a standard and a guide to accountability doesn't change. You can do what? Change the wording and put it in any other situation. That's the way things. And as we get into this, my prayer is go. It's time to put ourselves. Let's look at Luke chapter 1. Look at verse 1 to verse 3, just to see how accountability can be so smoothly done, so that it's not a heavy thing. Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 3. He says, many have undertaken to draw up an, what? an account of things that have been fulfilled among us. Just as they were handed down to us, by those from the first, from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully done what, investigated everything 
from the beginning to the what? To the end. It seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of these things you have been told. It's not merely giving given account. It's correct. It's complete. Please, can it be what? Clear. Orderly. Now many times when we are, because we are not used to accounting, what do we do? We normally want to say, what do you put in a report for this? What do you put in a report? How, what is the template for this? No, 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 no. Give an account. What you are thinking, what you have done, what you have spoken, and the effect of what you are doing. But you see, when we read some of these things, we read uh, to complete. Uh, well, I need to get a, 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 a memory verse today. What memory verse should I? Okay, now, yeah, now you give the memory verse from here. What's going to happen? You will forget this memory verse in two minutes. But it's meant to be what? What was the name of that? Part? I want to memorize this verse here. Therefore, see, since I myself have carefully investigated with Theosphorus, what was the name of that guy, Theosphorus? <laughs> That's the way. Is he your what? What name is that? We have already forgotten. It's not merely memory. <laughs> Seeing the principle and how it works in life is extremely important. That's what we're doing here. So when you are giving a report, why am I doing this report? What is the set of information I am having? Is it correct? Is it complete? Is it clear? S make it as simple as what? Possible. Simple to read and easy to use for decision what? Making. That's very important. It's not merely reporting in requirements of, the, of, of you getting a TIN number or uh, this is what the company, uh, the company registry requires to submit re documents for whatever in requirements for fulfillment of the requirements of a loan, uh, of getting a loan. We only do records because we have been asked. We want, I want to get a loan. Hello? Those things, that is not a healthy attitude. So, this accountability, just as we said earlier, Mrs. Kayondo said it, it, learns, it helps us to learn to maintain what? Goodness. And number two, to do what? To function better, to work better, to improve what we have. And whether you know it or not, there is so much record of you which you don't even know about. If you doubt that, you ask Google. It, has, it knows you much more than you even know yourself. It reads your patterns. But you know how? They are advertisers. That's how they make their money. And how do they advertise? Just by reading your patterns. In those emails. In those things. This social media is not free of charge. You are actually the what? The guy they are selling. I'm not saying stop using them. I'm only saying... They read the records of how you are posting, the kinds of words you post in there, you write in there. They read your emails. Not that they sit to read. They just have machines enough to read what you, the content of your emails. And then I saw that he, he normally writes, he writes God five, uh, 50 times in one email. Now, then he writes Jesus a hundred times. <laughs> so he said, this one, if we suggest Jesus, 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 Jesus here, here <laughs> there is this hero song called Jesus. That, <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> and that's their business. Keeping what? An account of your words. And you don't even have an account of your own words. That's their business. They read your patterns, then they suggest that... <laughs> 
Hello? You scared? Uh, my intent is not to scare you, but to alert you that please keep an account. Why? I also use WhatsApp and everything, and I'm aware they are doing that. They monitor the, your, your search. They do this. They, if you keep searching pornography, they keep suggesting. There is even this post here. There, there is even this one. They, you can never run out. If, you, if you're looking for business, they, they, there is a business seminar here. They, in New York, they even suggest for you in China. Why are you not thinking of going? Those things. That is accountability. Okay? So accountability monitor the volume of work done. Here we are dealing with the system of work. It helps you to monitor the, work, the volume of work done. It also helps you to assess the quality of the work you are doing. Is it truly good or it is not? How am I doing? Is this enough that I am doing? If you don't monitor the volume of work you are doing, believe me, you will either end up underworking or overworking. You will not know how much is enough work. You will just be hungry to work and you will tire yourself into pieces and you end up a, a stressed person and actually useless again. And if your job is somewhere, they will even begin to realize your, your output is not good. And then what next? They will suck you from the job. If it is your own business, you will actually end up losing what? Your mind. And you will become useless even to your customers. Are you there? But anyway, these things happen there in the mass where I live, not here on earth. For here in earth, there are no stressed people. Not even in this room. Okay, if they are on earth, not in this room. Eh? Yeah. So, monitor the volume of work you are doing. Monitor the quality of work you are doing. And then assess the effect. Effect. Effect of the volume and quality of work. Both work are done, and then two work are not done. Sometimes the effect of what we have not done can destroy us today, and we don't realize its effect. If you want to see the effect of work not done, you tell all the farmers to stop farming food today. But you will not see its effect today. When will you see it? You will see it in January. Then we say prices have gone so up. Now we have to import food. Now there is no food. This day is a kilo of maize, of maize flies. How much? 20,000? Can it go even up to 20,000 or not? It can. Depending on what people are doing. How together? Whether you do work or you don't do work, it has an effect. So you check yourself. I might not be doing the things I'm meant to be doing today. They will affect me tomorrow, whether you want it or I don't want it. There is nothing that has no effect. It always has an effect. Do it well, it has an effect. Do it poorly, it has an effect. Don't do it, it has an effect. Without accountability, you won't know. You will find yourself in a situation such as this. Let me read Proverbs 19. What does it say? Verse 1, up to, actually, up to verse 4. Um, let me tell you something. I have the ability to write uh, proposals eh? hmm? to get funding. Eh? Eh? And then I, I generate a $1 million even 
in the six months. And I actually, by the way, I can even uh, do some photography here, some, some what? Some video ring. <laughs> and so you see these people here came from poor what? <laughs> Communities. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you saw, uh, but these people, we are equipping them for, uh, you see me there doing what? Standing before them doing, uh, you see? Uh, and uh, you understand? Can I use you as gene pigs? <laughs> to get what I want? I can. <laughs> but be sure if that's not what I'm doing here. Why are those cameras there? What are they there for? Then why are they, if we are talking to ourselves, then why are they there? <laughs> I might be giving accountability for some hidden funding here, right? <laughs> so you had better watch, you might be one of the victims of my schemes, you understand? <laughs> okay. But anyway... We have refused to do that. Even the temptation is big. And it's not lack of the ability to convince. But because there was a cause. The Lord even wanted us to go through what appears to be very hard moments. But to be trained enough and be solid enough. Unshakable. And actually, many of these lessons we are sharing are lessons of real life. When you learn the lesson, next he send you somebody who needs that lesson. How together? We have not marketed ourselves in terms of beating up a nice profile. When people ask for, please send us your profile. Say, we don't even have a profile. We, I'm sorry. Who told you we could be able to do uh, these things you are asking us to do? Let him be the one to speak. We, don't, we are not even sure if we can do it. <laughs> now, that is a funny way of doing uh, business, isn't it? And the word, it is funny and strange. And say, okay, okay, what can you do? Say, mm, what do you want to, to, to do? This, this, this. Ah, okay. We can try. Who else have you served? He say, <laughs> to us, whenever we are doing these things, we actually take every word challenge as it is. We don't say we did this, we did this so well, so well. This one you want us to ask. We take it on as a what? A new challenge. We can't rely on the things we did yesterday to serve you here. Otherwise we shall get those other things, try to fit them here and they won't fit. Now, I'm not saying that's how you should do business. But we've got to a, a, a level of grace that we do what? We are able to say that. And with confidence. Then we don't say, mm -mm, we cannot serve you. We are not in position to do what? Oh, you want it in two weeks? Ah, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. There are people who can do it in two weeks. For us, we can do that work probably in five weeks. If you feel five weeks will not be delaying you, please feel free. We can serve. If you feel you really need it so badly, we are sorry. Ah, what brought us to Kampala? Isn't it to make money? <laughs> Where will we get money for ministry to? Uh, those things, uh, you, those pressures are normal. Mm. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Because of the responsibility we carry, minding very well every bit involved in the work we are doing and the cost of doing it, we are able to know how much it costs us per minute of work. Per what? It is reduced to that. Mr. Oker, did you get into the per minute now? <laughs> yeah, even Mr. Okero. But let me tell you, you are an accountant eh? with the papers. Isn't it? With the papers. And, eh? and you studied for how many years? Many years. Eh? 
I don't have a single certification in that. Not at all. But the grace, a choice to refer to the financial what? It makes a very big difference. It makes a very big what? Difference. difference. It's so real. This is the business manual. We've done some serious consulting for some companies here. We're not at liberty to just talk about those things because they don't help. Most importantly, just judge for yourself whether it's truthful or not truthful, whatever we are talking about here. Be the judge. And you don't have even to accept what we are talking about here. You can choose to ignore it. Nobody is compelled to do so. But my strong recommendation, pass through it. And you'll see for yourself. As you move by and walk diligently with it. I can go on and on. But the portion Mrs. gave me to talk about was just a very little like this. Out again. And Mr. Okero, please, don't even try to say, you see, but Mr. Mwes, no, 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 no. Have you ever come to meet us with me alone? Whom have you met with me? Mrs. Ikayon. And you assume we are the ones doing. Do you know who types those things? You've not met. So do you realize people behind there are doing a lot more than... Do you know who printed it? So what is the standard teamwork? There is a lot more. There are many more what? People involved in any small piece of work. But just follow the piece and see how best it can be done. That's how things, this world, God wired us so, 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 so much. Do you even know the person who made that pen? Which you are using to write. Is he participating with you in what you are taking on here or not? Do you see how God networked us all over the world? We had better look at things in their full picture. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you are enjoying yourself. Do you even know the person who made that pen which you are using to write? Is he participating with you in what you are taking on here or not? Do you see how God networked us all over the world? We had better look at things in their full picture. Then we shall be humble enough to appreciate the goodness of the Lord. A single sheet of paper has, we have spent a single, I mean almost an hour, trying to study what is right there. We are doing it purely as educators, not that's how educators' notes are, what? are written. But then the learner or the student or whoever is consuming should go deeper and find more clearly, create a unique environment for themselves to apply those. What we are doing is giving what? Principles. And there is more to it. There is more to it. And that's now why so in unique situations, we handle uniquely. The principles are standardized by our creator. Then each one applies them in the unique situation in which they are. And uh, now that I've been doing uh, some work, I want to encourage uh, you to listen to Mrs. Kayos. God bless you. God bless you, Mr. Mwesigwa. Thank you very much. Um, he's actually done all of the work. I'm now here 
to summarize. Remember we said that owning up, that, that accountability is actually owning up to the state of matters that is arising from our thoughts, our, our words, and our actions. Whereas we are saying things start from the thoughts, think, it reflects in our words, and it reflects in our actions. And then that affects the environment around, uh, around us. It affects the things around, around us. And if we will go back to work, if I can bring this up in the line of, of you know what we are saying, work. And we are saying that work are actions done to meet a need, you know? So you observe, you observe that there is a need and in your head you begin thinking, you know, I would like to meet this need. There is a gap here. I would like to meet this need in this way or the other way. Or there may even be 10 other people around you meeting this need, but I will be different because of A, B, and C. And so you take these thoughts and put them in words. Isn't that, you know what people then call their plan? You know what they then say is our business plan or my plan of how to do. So you start bringing that thought into words. You know, we start defining, you start writing, I want to meet this particular need, all right? How do I want to meet this need? I want to meet this need in these ways, A, B, and C. Oh, to what extent am I going to meet this need? Who am I serving? How am I serving them? How many or how much, you know? And there, so we are defining, that we are beginning to describe the work that we are going to do. Oh, so after that, you then say, how, how will I need, how will I do it? I will take steps A, B, and C. So you are arranging your tasks in order for me to meet this need to this extent that I want to. For this number of people, I will do A, B, and C. I will take these actions. So we start defining our tasks. We start sequencing them. Which task comes first? Which task comes next? You know, which, and which one follows which and what is the timing? So we are arranging our tasks. And then from there, what do I need to meet all these tasks? You know, we give account. And then who do I need? And so we get to accountability, giving account. Do you know that you cannot give account without going through the other process? And then we said it requires continuous check. So you, you define what you're going to do, you plan for it, and you begin implementing. Then as you do, you're also observing and keeping a record. You know, without doing that, it is impossible to actually give account. It is, it is actually uh, impossible to own up to what we are doing. So what are the benefits? The benefits of giving up of accountability is it's used, it helps us determine the quantity of work done. You know, having defined it, you can go back and say, how much work have we done of what we said to do? Do you realize how difficult it is if you didn't document somewhere what is it that you wanted to do and how much of it, okay? So quantity of work done, and there you can also tell, oh, what haven't we done out of the things we said that we would do? What haven't we done? And then how well have we done what we say to do? How well, what is the quality of what we have done so far? Why is all this important? It helps us uh, determine how the quantity of work and its quality can be improved. Remember we said the purpose, maintain good and also do better. Learn how to do better. So how does that happen? You will see which work, which work, which of those steps you've taken are necessary to keep doing. Or what is it that we missed that we should actually start 
doing. And of course, if you haven't been keeping a record, you will not know. So what is it that we need to start doing? And what is a waste of time of what we are doing? What is actually not necessary? Perhaps we are repeating ourselves, you know? Maybe we planned too wide for the people we are serving, it's too much. So what do we need to eliminate for now? What do we need to stop doing? If you have not been keeping a record, you haven't been observing, watching, it is difficult to be able to determine these things. So we avoid what is unnecessary and see what was not done, what was left out. That is the purpose of, that is the benefit of doing accountability. You will not know what is good. You will not know what to improve, what to stop doing without keeping clear record of your work. Okay? So we are saying, what are the benefits? Remember we said deploy resources to function. We want to know how have the resources been used to do the work? What volume of materials have we used to do each task, to deliver each task? What amount of resources did we, we, did we use? And how much did it actually cost? Was it more than we, we planned, we foresaw? Is it less? So if you didn't, remember that's where we say deploy resources to function. For each task, what resources do you need to do it? If you don't have that well thought through and well written down in the first place, how will you, and then as you implement, you're actually noting how much have we used? How much have we used? How much have we used? You will not be able to get this information. What volume of materials have we used? And their cost. You know, I'm one of the people who heard uh, from Mr. Mwesigwasam and Mr. Mwesigwasam time back about recording your, how much you're spending each day. You know, keeping an account of your spending. And it sounds easy, but it's not. You know, sometimes you, it, it is Wednesday and you're like, oh, I didn't write for Monday, I didn't write. So you go back and, so I've, I'm doing it. And I can show you the whole September, I can show you the whole October, I can show you. But it, it is not easy. Now, I, I asked my son yesterday, one who has just completed P7, to enter for me our expenditure. And he scrolled down and said, Mommy, you mean we've spent all this money already in October? in November in these two weeks? And he said, yes, you know? And I thought it is good for you to what? Mm. Yeah, when you start saying, mommy this, mommy that, you know? But sometimes you say, that is not in the plan. That we, we need, maybe we'll do that next time. We, we, we don't have money for that at the moment. People say, for us, we are the ones who don't get this. I, I, you know, I realized it is good for you to see it and actually think about it. You know, volume of materials and their cost. And then volume of time used. How much time are we actually using? Are we using what we planned? Are we actually using more than we planned, less than we planned? Okay. What, how much money, what is the volume of money we have used? And what has come out, volume of resources generation, when we have deployed all these, what kind of resources have come out, have we gained as a result? And each home and each visionary <laughs> needs to actually keep an eye on this. If you don't, you really don't know if you're going right or if you're going wrong, whether it's a church, you know, whether it's a, a church, whatever it is. And two, how use, why, why is this important? It helps us know how use of resources can be improved. 
keep necessary resources. What is necessary? Keep using. You know, where more is needed, add. But based on a clear judgment from the facts, from your records. You know, sometimes we imagine these things. You, um, to fight Ebola, we need, no, we need more money. Why? How much mon more money? To do what? I remember seeing when the minister went to speak to the people in Mubende, the first question, we need more money. You have not facilitated us. But, you know, exactly to do what? In a, starting from what you've been given. This more that you need, what is it exactly for? And without this proper record, we will just keep guessing these figures and saying that whatever is not done, it was because the money was not enough. But how then do you even know what is enough? Without a plan, observing, recording. Okay? Eliminate unnecessary resources. You know, we begin to even see where there is waste. I think here we are using, you know, not even I think, from the records we see that we are using too much of this. We are actually wasteful here. Therefore, we can use less of it. Avoid unnecessary resources. What is not useful to use? Remove it. And then, so what was not used? Where is the balance? Where else can we deploy it? Where else can we deploy it? You know, without these records, again, you know, we, we live in a state of waste and a state of blaming what is not done because of resources. I remember a discussion um, that if a husband somewhere gives a wife the money uh, to, they call it Kameza, they called it Kameza, you know, and she goes out and, and does what it was meant to do. Then they were talking about the balance. So what happens to the balance, you know? It's, it's, she can do whatever she wants because that is balance, you know? And then tomorrow if someone comes back and says, but we need this. But you see yesterday there was a balance that no one knows exactly where it. And then people, we start accusing each other, you're mean, you're wasteful, you know? But, you know, is it a balance for just, what is that balance for resources? not used, you know, balance of resources, where else can we deploy them usefully? Remember we talked about a uh, system of work, deploying people to function, deploying people to function. And one of the things that we are now, we, we are looking up is to follow how people are involved in the work. You have deployed people to work, it's also follow up how are people involved in their work? How are they working? How is the, the character of each person involved is? Because we said helpful, suitable helpers are identified according to character and competence. So you know where to deploy them and how to deploy them. So how is that character playing out in that place where you deployed? Is it working as expected? How the competence of each person involved is? Do they have the right knowledge? Yes, it may be the right character, but perhaps this person is lacking in knowledge. So what do we do? We need more training, we need more training. How do we know that we need more training? If we are not observing these things and keeping record, you won't know, you know? You won't know what training to give, how to give it, and when. How combination of character and competence of each person affects production and productivity. These people placed here, 
how is it affecting what we are supposed to do? Or do we need to readjust and reorganize and maybe re uh, change the team in order to get better results? That is, and how, it, how does this help? Each pass, it helps us know how each person involved can be improved. When we take record of these things, we see how we can improve. How can I reorganize my people so that we work better? How can I re reorganize the team? Who should I team up and who should I separate so that we work better? And who needs equipping? Who needs equipping? What kind of equipping do they need so that they can work better? And also, who to eliminate? Yes, because, you know, sometimes we don't want to antagonize anyone, but you know, how long will your work carry dead weight? Yeah? Dead, <laughs> dead weight. Yeah? There are some people, they are the right character, they, or they, they, they are the right competence, but the character is creating trouble everywhere across the whole team and no m amount of talking perhaps the person is unteachable however much you try to correct the person just can't adjust so it also helps you know who to eliminate or mrs okello was giving us an example how some managers can want to overtake you so if you haven't been analyzing these things well, you say, how dare they challenge me and seem to want to be the bosses around here. So we start saying, eliminate for the wrong reason. Yet maybe understanding these people and setting some boundaries can sort the problem with the team. But otherwise, yes, there are cases when we need to see how people exit. Sometimes right character, right competence, but maybe the person no longer has the energy. No longer has the energy. You know, I know a place where someone has worked for so many years, over 20 years. They've worked, they are good, they are diligent, they are faithful, but they are now 77 years old, but they still want to work. And when they come, they sit there half the time now, opening the Bible and dozing off. But now, no one wants to, no one knows how to say, maybe it's time to stay at home. Okay? It is time to, yeah, it's time to stay at home. Say, Bambi, maybe what will she do at home? Okay. But how is it affecting your productivity? You know? How? At 77, you don't stand up as fast as you used to. And you don't serve the customers as fast as you used to. So how do you manage such a person? That is all the benefits of our keeping accounts. You even oversee such scenarios and begin planning how to eliminate properly without creating offense and without destroying lives, okay? And which kind of people to bring into the team? So now, that thought, the thought process in that company should be who should replace this one? The good that they have had all these years, what kind of person do we need to now bring in? or how many of them to bring in without having kept, first of all, having identified what you need, then having kept record and observed people in the course of their working, you will not be able to understand these things or do them thoughtfully, okay? Those are the benefits of keeping 
records. You know, I have a tendency to speak very fast sometimes. <laughs> so I hope I have not spoken too fast over these matters. I hope I haven't spoken. But I wanted us to, to connect this system of work, the various steps that are involved, how they all connect with each other. It's a cycle, you know? It's a cycle all the way back to giving account, which then helps you to improve, maintain good and improve your tasks, maintain good in deploying resources and improve, maintain good in deploying people and improve, and then you keep learning and continue going round as we do work everywhere. Good work everywhere. So that is it. We have been talking about work. Remember we said the pillars of an economy is we do good work. We get rewards as a result of work done and manage. We want to know how to manage those rewards very well. This is our fourth session for this year, and all of them have rotated around work. We have not gone outside it. The next time, we are going to move to getting rewards. Better a poor man whose work is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. Better you stay poor than doing evil, than doing things which are wrong, than thinking and uh, generating more evil, to lead more people to be more evil. Nobody is going to change our country for us. But the one person who is here, who is this one person who is here, who is going to change it? Yes. Me is going to change it. Me is going to do what? Yes, we should not put but at this time. And I believe, and I know, it can be done. The ability to enrich, for instance, myself, even uh, Mrs. Mwesuga to be just rich, is possible. Mrs. Kayondo there, you see her? She has, don't you see her glasses, those ones? They are professor, like she can conjure up some things and just enrich herself. Do you, you see her? Does she have the brains to do, to create some evil? She has. She chooses not to. It's a choice one has to make. But part of these disciplines are what help us, again, to remain so settled and creative amidst what appears to be a very dark place. What appears to be very difficult to change and you say, I will take a firm word, stand regardless of what is around me. And you are able to generate the resources that do things. I've already heard many people do lots of sacrifices in doing these things here. So many. You see that? But better a what? A poor man whose work is blameless than a fool whose lips of us. So whatever we speak can either make us wise and blameless or fools. It's a choice I have to make. Who chooses to be a fool here? Those are hard words. <laughs> what does it say? It is not even good to have zeal, a strong desire to do things without knowledge. And I want to underline of the truth, not just merely any knowledge. And it is not even good to be hasty and miss the way. You know, people do a lot of hasty things. Eh? Kupapa, thinking they are bangua. But kupapa, papa, 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 pa, and they enter into things. They say, you know, if nah, and then they enter into if nah, and, bah, and they, they are hit hard. Then they, then they are hit hard. Say, what happened? I can imagine how many have received the entire 
and then the poverty money, then a mioga, then everything, then they have received loans against properties they worked so hard for, then they have lost the properties they worked so hard for and they don't have nothing. Just moving into things is not healthy. <laughs> of course, I, I, I intended to do it so that it resounds electrical and you don't forget that one. Okay? It's very important. So, listen to what happens. If you do things that way, you choose to have pervert lips. You keep lying this one, lying this one, lying the other one, lying to the other one, lying until people begin, but this guy is a liar. And everyone whom you resonate with begins to see this guy is a what? And the, and the problem, even those who say you are a liar, they also begin to lie because they will not tell you the truth. They will just know you are a liar. And then, I need this help. Uh, uh, please, he's coming to you. He told me he's coming to you. Please, make sure you do what? Uh, be careful. But they are not telling you the truth. You're looking to you in the face and say, please, guy, stop telling us lies. So you have to sometimes face up to the people and put them across and, hey, hey, come on, I am here. Don't tell me lies, but I want to be helpful that you get out of what, the real cause of what? Telling lies. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering, which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. So you have to sometimes face up to the people and put them across and hey, hey, come on, I am here. Don't tell me lies, but I want to be helpful that you get out of what, the real cause of what? Telling lies. Those are hard moments. And I have had always to face such things to deal with. Not to choose someone, but make sure they get straight and clear. And uh, somehow, the person you've called liars for generations stops telling lies. And for you, you remain with the label, the label he's a liar. And he's no longer a liar. Why, he's forgiven by God. And he's very useful and he's no longer that other story you have. He has a new story. The, the old one is dead. Those things. A man is own what? Fully ruins his life. Yet his heart rages against the what? Foolishness can destroy and ruin a life. And what would we, do we do? I think God does not love me. I think God just hates me. I think God never helps me. You never see something that you can appreciate God for. It's very important. And what happens? I think it is ungodly for somebody to become wealthy. But listen, wealth brings many friends. But a poor man's friend When people begin to see you are a person of problems, <laughs> whenever they see you coming, they again me. They begin to see you have just now come either to create a, a craft scheme or <laughs> and people are tired of people of problems. Oh, oh. But uh, who is here? Please. Make some room for our babies, not to choose them, but to support them so that they get out of it. If it's one, they become very useful citizens who are going to change our nation. Because nobody is going to change this nation for us. Nobody. It's we who are going to change the stories of our families. It's we who are going to change the stories of our lives. You can't choose to call me a bastard. Me. Why? I could have grown up like one without parents. My, my mother died at eight, when I was eight years of age. And my father at 21, 22. And then he left almost his 13 children to take care of. And I am dead, isn't it? And useless, isn't it? 
But the grace, the grace, the mercies of God make a very big difference. And I choose to say, I won't turn he whom I'm responsible for. They should be fathered. They should be mothered. And fathering is not about producing children. Producers are very many around us. Producers of children, you can't count. Even a dog produces children. <laughs> they look this way, look this way. I say, I want you. And they say, I want you in bed. And we are talking family. Yes. After producing children, yes, please suffer with the child. They walk away. Hello? And that is okay? Yes. We are looking for some fathers. People who will be resolved and determined to say, I must raise up a child. Those are the ones we are missing. We want to find some mothers. Going into the labor world doesn't make you a mother. It makes you a producer of a what? A child. And if you are to raise a child, you raise the child in fullness, not just merely in parts. And these things are given to us, all of them. The full story is that picture. How do I say it? Even an economic skill. Where do these things be told? Tell me the university where these things are being taught on matters of work. Be the one to tell me. You've gone through the entire university school. Have you been taught these things? Thank you, Mrs. Kayondo, for giving that P7 child. He's called, actually called Ian Kayondo. You understand? Yeah, and that is finished. <laughs> that is finished. Okay? These guys here, you see these guys here? The other one is Daddy Diron, and this one is Daddy Praise. You understand? And they are, they are producing children, but they are also resolved to doing what? To raising them up. And as we speak right now, they applied those same principles we have been talking about in finance to build a sound and proper financial system. Accounting pro package. Have you done that? And they are very serious. They say we want to, if they are a single package of what? Of an accounting problem, a program is about how much? Single package if you buy it without stealing. You know, the, you know we, we steal software. We steal software a lot. How much is it? A single package. I'm a buyer of software. I don't steal a single piece. Okay? Somebody tells you minimum $1,000. How much is that? 3.8 million shillings. And you have to give it to somewhere in America. That's already a job shifted. They've created one and they say we have to replace what we can. And they've created that. And I've tested it. It's good. They've tried to convince me to do At first I was reluctant. But they applied. They have gone through it. Ah, say, check this. I've been punching holes into it. True or false? I think I've been very mean, isn't it? And sometimes they have wondered, ah, man, ay, 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 ay. They've gone back. Why? System of what? Accountability. And they have even created ways of get data from the other accounting software and just to see the same, the same quality you receive it here. Oh, they, but then there is more to this. Do I have shares in your company? And by the way, if it was poor quality, I would not even be speaking these things here. All together. But how do, we, how do I meet them? I was in need, and I wanted something to communicate with. I am communicating with the thousands of youth. You've seen that. And I say, how do I communicate with these youth and still make sense? With, and you know, each of those youth doesn't have necessarily a smartphone. And then calling is also not cheap. Yes. And all those things. But how, and pressing, sending a message one by one, I cannot. How together? It's too much work. We could, when there were fewer young men to deal with. Now there are thousands of youth. 
who need to be spoken to more regularly, almost a week. Every week. And then you have to type a message, you type. Or you go to bulk SMS. Now, they designed the software where I can keep a record of whom am I communicating with. And I send using my phone from my computer. I say, I need to talk to this one, to talk to this one, to talk to this one, and talk to this one. Please, let us get together. And that is very useful even in business communication. But they've done it. And the issues, you, you realize how, and sometimes true, I'm a boxer. H have I ever boxed you? H have I ever slapped you? I I've done that. Uh, don't add lovingly. <laughs> Just to say, it's a kick. <laughs> but of course, underlying there, the foundation is what? Because we got to do something. All together. That is how things can go. Oh, please, uh, do something. Do something. Okay? Do something. They didn't believe they could do it at some point. They, they thought they should get business from what? Which is not bad to get from elsewhere. Is there too much to do? Where? Where? Here in this house. There is too much to do. And now you are lacking what to do. Now, how many people are passing by young men and we are saying there are no jobs to do? What do those young men do? Need to be guided on what to do, how to live, how to do what they are doing, and do it consistently well. Simple. You will see suddenly what appears to be a weak economy can become so strong. No families will be beggars. Those who beg should, shall be beggars by choice. But why, by, why should my country actually beg? And how do Actually, we end up accepting all kinds of things, including man marrying man and woman marrying woman because we get funding. They are the ones who give us funding. What are you doing? Economy begins with you. What's the cost of a single session, family sense? Two? About three? Just short. So we go... Please, let us together write a proposal, right? No, let's pause for the photograph and ask for some funding from who? We can do something together. You might say, you know, you know when you stand here and you speak, huh? you become a public figure, isn't it? Yeah. And you become a celeb, right? <laughs> But uh, to, to be humble enough, those things are not produced by me. They are not even produced by Mrs. Kayondo. Not even Mrs. Mwesi. But they are produced by a young man there. You, look, stand up. That, that, that young man there. He, he's the artist behind where? There. For me, this, 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 I think if we could do this, that is it. How together? So who is, by the way, who has, who has been speaking to us then? Isn't it me? He has also spoken. Who else has spoken? The artist? Who else? The printer? Who else? Everybody! And to God be the word, the glory. God bless you. to give a testimony today and I want to thank God. I started engaging with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mwesiwa. I'm not even sure the year we started. You know, that is poor record keeping. Eh? <laughs> but I know it was before 2017, 2016, probably 2015. <laughs> uh -huh, November 20. 14. You see those who keep records? Let's keep records. And I will 
when he came, he came as to, to church. I had seen him before. But really interacting is when he came to our church, which I was also attending, called New Eden Life Church. And he introduced himself as one time he was talking to us, the way they usually introduce themselves. That, and one of the things he said is that he exhumes dead bodies. And I laughed like you have done. But you know, sometimes you can laugh when you're one of those things they are talking about. Eh? And you haven't yet what? realized eh? in going back i was in a transition let's just say a transition i was coming from a life which seemed very fancy and attractive but very unsatisfying i had been doing a job for 10 years which had a fancy title i was called actually deputy to regional coordinator and the person was coordinating the east african region for defeat funded programs and I used to fly like every month at least I went somewhere and in that season I traveled like 15 countries and people would tell me eh you know that was life I was also earning in even dollars but you know where you do the work and inside you're like but this work is benefiting only us it is labeled for the poor the development, but it's only for us. So I was dissatisfied. And in that dissatisfaction, I had made a decision to leave that full-time employment. And I was hoping to join NGOs, which make a difference. But you know, in that transition, you also, I also dilly-dallied. You know, I was also saying some prayers that, Lord, I want my work to make sense and to be useful. But I wasn't leaving the unuseful what? place because of the rewards, you know, as I understood them. And God did something to help me. You know, God helps us. They fired all of us from UK. It, the head office was in UK and the, it had people implementing in all the regions. And for us, we're in East Africa. One day they fired everyone. And our boss said, okay, I will pay you like I've been paying for two months and after that. So I stayed in the company. But seeing no way forward, I decided to jump out. I tried to get into the NGO world. Every interview, I would be among the last two. And they say, but you, you've been in consultancy and you have not implemented any project from start to finish. So that when that failed, I started doing consultancy. But the time I met them, they, God was reducing them. You know, each year they were getting fewer. And I also don't have the character to chase them. You know the way people chase, I can't do it. If you bring it to me, I can do but chasing. So it was getting less, there was no work, and I was wondering what am I going to do? You know where people begin to say, what has happened to her life? Everything seemed so good, now what is happening? And in fact, someone, sometime one time said, after some years had passed that, na ye ya kuloga, tanaza lubugo. You know, you know when life goes that bad, eh? from and everything. So that is where he met me when I was feeling completely lost. You know, you all you look to be serving, you look to be even by that time I was even still getting some consultancies, some good money. But every year they were reducing. I didn't know anymore who I was. You know, sometimes when life hits you, you don't know who you are anymore. You're confused. Everything I was doing, I kept wondering, is this the right thing I should be doing? If I served in church, I was like, am I not wasting my time? I should be in an office that way I used to. So you drop that or you start doing it half-heartedly. I was very disheartened, very sad, very confused. And I remained in that state from 2014 November up to this year. This year, it's when I actually told Mr. Mwesigwa that, you know, for the first time, I am at peace with where God has put me. I have stopped fighting because all that time I was fighting with God. I was fighting to go back to where I was. Yet I had said the prayer that I want meaningful what? Work. I was fighting to go back like, you know, I got your pulling this side and it's going I was fighting with God, so I had no peace. If I worked in family sense, after a while I would, you know, I would say, am I doing the right thing? 
what am I doing now with my life? Especially when people are around you. My father invested thoroughly in my life, thoroughly, including personally paying for my masters in the UK with his money, not from any grant. So you, you begin to even feel small that this man is saying, what my, what, how did my child fail? And you even begin not wanting to look at your parent. But, and I was fighting. God was defining a new path. There was one word speaking clearly in my life. Psalms 40, 1 to 3. And I named, I even created a company and said its purpose is to give life to business. That word business I didn't like because it's, I see it as giving life to people. Because I could see myself totally lifeless. Now what is my testimony? If I hadn't had people like Mr. and Mrs. Mwesigwa to stand with me, these years I would totally have lost my mind because I was directionless. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether what I was doing was right. I was fighting. I didn't know myself anymore, who I am, or what I'm supposed to do. But they invested several evenings. I don't know how many and hours People, uh, the, Mr. Okello, how much did, and Mrs. Okello, how much did Mr. Mwesigwa say a minute cost? 3,000? Let's say 3,600. If I was to be charged for the minutes, eh, they would sell everything and I would still be, I would be declared bankrupt because I cannot pay. I cannot pay for the time that they have given me. So that for the first time, this up is saying, Agnes, you're beginning to gain some weight. Mm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and life has come back. And so one time, when, I think two weeks ago, I asked him, but Mr. Mwesigwa, you mean I was that dead? That I was so dead that it has taken all nearly 10 years to pull me out of this, this to exhume this dead body? Totally dead. But for the first time, I am f at rest with, and I'm saying, God, point. I am willing to go and be useful again. So I am thanking God that you obeyed him enough to give that time. And Mrs. Mwesigwa, thank you also. Because if you hadn't allowed, they are, there is a time when they would meet me, and she's also seated there. And in my heart, I used to ask her, because me, I can't do it. My husband is speaking to someone and I sit there for two, three hours. I was like, how is it that she sits there? I, because me, I can't do it, you know? But she would sit there. And you know, so Mrs. Mwesigwa, thank you for very much for your giving and allowing him to do what God has called him to do, what he has called you both to do. And very sorry for all the inconveniences. I'm sure we've inco inconvenienced you. So thank you for that continued giving in resources, in time, so that even myself, I am finally beginning to feel alive and ready to embrace a new direction. So I praise God. That is family sense. You know? The sharing, you would see me sharing here. It was them trying to keep me alive. At some point, me even, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> they were trying to keep me what? Alive. So I praise God for that. And that is my testimony. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Blessed be the Lord of my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Pastor Anseyoko is my husband. We are 10 years now in marriage. I just came out of honeymoon to come for this session. This, yeah. I just, I, just didn't, I just didn't want to miss because I didn't know how I was going through the next week if I ever missed family sense. Hallelujah. I met uh, Pastor Kenneth yeah before I got married. It's my husband who knows him. He introduced me to him, but I'm here to testify about the goodness of the Lord. 
I got married when I was a very little girl at 32 years old. Very little, naive and innocent. 32, very little. Didn't know anything about God. I, I knew about God, but about marriage. And uh, my husband was my greatest teacher and he handed me over to Pastor, uh, Pastor uh, I call him mentor, mentor Kenneth, though he wants to be called Brother Ken. At first, I, I didn't know how to read. I was reading Broken. So I was like, ah, who is Broken? I don't want to meet broken people. But I realized it was broken. Hallelujah. But that time I met my mentor. Sorry, i have got to be calling you mentor. I, I hesitate when uh, the wife is my matron. Hope you know now how strong I am. A <laughs> world changer. Ah, out of the blue. I didn't know her. These are friends of my husband. And I found my husband at the point of need. Pastor Anseyoko is a very visionary man. Very anointed and handsome. But he was, I think, do we have dead, dead, and deadest? Okay, in family sense, we create words. If he were dead, he was dead. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I found when these people were, were just nursing him. Ah. Huh? And the Lord told me that that's your husband. And I was waiting to get married to a man and, you know, fly and have twins and, you know. And now this is the one that surfaces. But these two kept parting here and there, putting pages and then trying to make him walk. It's very unfortunate he's not here. Now I think some are saying, and ah, now she's saying that because he's not around. Even if he was around, I would say it. I knew how I found him. And I want to appreciate this ministry. He was without a ministry. But he had the ministry within his mind. But was not visualized. But through family sense, I realized that the, he kept telling me that God has brought you to nurse and to be a mother. For me, I was a mother before I, I produced. Because there's producing. Before I manufactured. God has helped me now to manufacture four children. Now I'm, re, I'm, not, I'm mothering them as they grow. Here we know our terms. Hallelujah. We don't just manufacture and produce forth. After producing, we raise. And then we are mothering. So in honeymoon already, I had two sons. Very handsome, but chaotic. So every time I would go to him, ah, I said, no, you are the mother. Mother them. You cannot know the smile I had last time on 29th when the sons, by then he, one was, tw was 12, another was 10. Now one is 22, another is 20. Very big, handsome boys. But the 10 years journey, Pastor Mwesigo, I would not walk it. I would not, step, I would not even celebrate the 10th anniversary if you didn't hold my hand. At one time, I wanted to give up. But again, I was born again. Now it was time. That session of being wedded. I knew I was married and I, we had a wedding. But he kept telling me that every time you are getting wedded, you are getting to know him. You know, for me, my marriage of 10 years has been in last year in family sense. I wonder how people come here. They attend and then they miss a session afterwards. I don't know where they get their, their inspiration from. This is to, I know you are feeling, you may be feeling bad <laughs> that we are celebrating you, but we must celebrate you. We, we are dead. We could not manage. Even up to now, I don't know. I, I feel my husband is still dead. Why? We are a ministry. When I look at these two every time, I must mention, I get envious. Maybe it's not right to be envious. They are in ministry. They are being equipped. They are both of them here. Now we struggle with ministry. Why are ah? We struggle about tithe and offertory. Have you asked we're not supposed to even talk about tithe to make people bring tithe? <laughs> but now, well, maybe when the time comes. But I want to thank the Lord. Testimony is, I have made it up to today. Amen. And I pray that I make it to the end. That I turn to that person they are mentoring. We have been trained by the best. 
no challenge. If we hear the testimonies that the Lord told them, don't go for, for foreign aid, don't do what, sell all you had. There was a story they told us, I say, what? That when you, is that what it means when you get married? They told you sell everything you have from the house and then you follow and come and, and minister. And there is no food. And there is no fees. Oh, we bless the Lord so much. May God bless you so much, our mentors. May you live on to change lives. But I want to tell you, or I want to warn you, if you have not been hurt by them, I am one of them that has been hurt. Sometimes they say, say words and you feel they are cutting within. And as if you have not done anything from the things they have been telling you. Reality sometimes pushes us away when we want to run away from the truth. But every time I find myself again craving and I enter. Why? Because the, that other spirit that says, yes, you can make it. We can, it there's a, there was that station we had said it is hard but not impossible. It is very hard to live this family sense kind of life. It is very hard but it is not impossible. Which means it is possible. Praise the Lord. The world needs us. We are the ones surviving. People are flying. People are what? But they are dead. You have heard the testimony. You wish to fly. But there are those that are flying, but they're empty. But if for us we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we want to bless the Lord so much. Right now we are a very happy family. God has blessed us. The boys are back. They are humble. Oh, they are learning to be humble. But we are happy. At least now we can talk. They are learning. Hallelujah. So, Pastor and the wife, Metron, thank you so much. Actually, I saved him as my Metron and to my helpers at home. They, when they say, hey, my Metron is calling. They don't know my Metron is a title. They think it's a name. Hey, it is my Metron calling. They all, now everyone is my Metron at home. So, I failed to say message, message. I failed to say Christian. I, I failed. I just say my Metron. I got her in just a week. And I want to assure you, I'm a role model. I'm a mother. You have met at me. I've tried to, to walk by the footsteps. And by the grace of God, I'll be there. Before my husband sat down, he was talking about people not producing children, but be producing children, but then fathering them. You have been a father first to me, and you have been a father to many. I celebrate you. 50 years ago, my husband was born <laughs> by the roadside. More than 50 years ago, not 50 years ago, more than 50 years ago. <laughs> Family Saints, please join me to celebrate a man of God, a warrior of God.
One. They've been one eh, for, I think they are, eh, they are forming into I've one. Also, I've also flew so it's, 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 it's also her birthday. Eh? By, eh? When it's his birthday, it's our what? So we want to thank her for allowing him to do what he does. For her giving, for her patience, for her tolerance, for her endurance. Happy birthday once again to you, Pastor Ken. Michael Kisa is my name. I got to know about family sense through Mrs. Kayondo. Today we were uh, was supposed to be a family a, a wedding. In, a, there was supposed to be a wedding in a family, and Pastor Lucy, being a core member of the family, was supposed to be there. But I'd say that if you go for the wedding, my journey will lead me to family sense so that we don't miss twice. Last time we had church anniversary and we kept saying how can we shift the debt so that we do not have these days coinciding but um, our church venue is small so we always hire out a venue for a bigger gathering so we had booked a, v a venue and we couldn't shift the debt but family sense has been such a blessing to us when I first came and we were taken through the family wheel. First of all, there was an opening up of my mind. It's like I had had a lot of false principles that I was running with, with regards to issues to do with family and marriage. Or some of them were not actually the solid principles of God's word to run a family. Now, when we went through the family wheel, Something just happened. My mind, there was a shift. All of a sudden, an eagerness came into my heart. I need to be a part of what God is doing. I need to be trained, instructed in the ways of God so that I can build marriage and family better. From that time, we haven't looked backwards. It's been a wonderful, beautiful, heart-searching opportunity for us so that we can stand in alignment with the word of God. Um, a time came when our children shifted from the Uganda curriculum and then we opted for the SCE curriculum. And so they had to start schooling from home. Now when we knew we had them closer, we said whatever God is teaching and building in our lives, we want them to be a part of what God is doing. Now we've started coming with them Interesting. When we leave this place and we go back, Masi first told us and said, ah, I had never known how God fits into the picture. It's not like education has always been putting God at a distance and this branch of knowledge and what was always all by itself. But when Pastor Ken was explaining, I saw that God is at the center and everything else outside of the center. So God has to work from the center and make everything make sense. She simply said, now I know. And I see the importance of having the opportunity to learn from God's way. So that I can. That's, she's our first daughter. And she said, I've seen God at the center of business. I want to keep him at the center in my life. And that's what she shared with us. And that blessed us. 
the boy on moving around the house and tell you, ah, I understand work is not a punishment. Work is something actually we are designed by God to do. It should be a joy. This is now a 12 year old telling us, ah, and when you work well, serve well, there is a sure reward. But when you are rewarded, you can't be reckless with the reward. You have to manage well. This is what they have picked from here. I don't need to share with their youth about this. They picked them and now they want to really, really share with their friends. And that has blessed us so much. I never had a chance while growing up to hear what I'm hearing today. And I never had a chance for my parents taking me to a gathering where we would hear God speak to us from his word on how we should live this life. So for me, it's been a very powerful, powerful blessing. But then sometimes as we're sharing there, a number of examples you give, some of them relate with ministry, being a pastor, and there are things I've picked. Some of them come as hard knocks, poop, and you know, something had to be released so that you allow the truth to settle in its place in your heart. And if I may give an example, there is a time when you illustrate and say that as pastors, our role is to teach and equip these saints of God and enable them to be prepared for the works of service wherever God has. Concentrate on that and do it well. And there is going to be a sure reward. So, there was something that shifted in my heart as well. Because you even illustrated and say that, I think you quoted from Lamentations, when things were not running right in the temple, and the priests had to go out to look for food because there was no means of sustenance from the temple. And then you challenged the people who were here. At that time, I'd come with some church members. And then you challenged them, if you reward the pastors well and they are committed to doing their work well, everyone else will benefit because instead of going up and down to look for money to survive, they are well, uh, no, they are, they are well, they are well resourced here. They are being rewarded for what they are doing. So they will concentrate on seeking God and making sure that they seek the heart of God to be able to impact our people for his glory. And now we don't talk about tithe in Good Tidings Tabernacle. But the people just come and give by themselves. I don't talk about money in church. I simply minister, and at the end of the service, everyone by themselves just come. We don't even have an official time for passing Cabo, but they just have that sense of knowing we have to worship and acknowledge God, and we have to make sure that the work of God goes on, so they do that. And that is what GT does. In fact, if you came, you may even think these people don't give, but people give at the end of the service, just see. They drop in and they go. And I thank God for that. We are not in debt. We kept serving God. And the people are doing what they're supposed to do. So I learned that from you. I picked it and I've never. So at whatever time of the service, even if you came from the beginning, you may think they don't give, but we give. But now the people know once they have been fed, once they have been ministered to, it is their responsibility to honor. And that's thank God. Thank you so much. We sing and praise the Lord. I will sing and praise the Lord. He is worthy to be For he is worthy to be Babies don't talk, but they can cut a cake. It is the Lord's meal we shall share together. <laughs> My Lord, I'm grateful unto you yes, for your love and care. Praise be to your holy name. Praise be to your holy name. Thank you for your kindness, friends. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor.
Rasta. Happy birthday to you. Wish you many more. We wish you many more. We wish you many more. Happy birthday to you. much for coming. Susan, you're welcome. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in love. Bind us, bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together in love. Family Sense is on a mission of teaching God's truth for reforming marriages and building families throughout the nation. Stability of our nation can only be realized with well-founded families and marriages. We therefore invite you to engage in family sense gatherings. Should you have any questions or need specific assistance, please feel free to contact us on 0772-518-554 or 0754-734738.
You can also email us on no regrets at counselor.com. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next time.